in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed so that your progress will be evident to everybody the bible says so let your light shine not before angels not before demons hallelujah let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works the fruits of your sacrifices in the spirit and as a result praise your heavenly father in heaven God is doing great things in this place and we honor him for what he's doing week after week. There is a building, there is a conformity. We are being molded into something. The Bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be like. But I want you to know that God is making men in this place. This is the way you father me I love the way you father me this is the way you father me I love the way this is the way you father me I love the way you father me this is the way you father me This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Teach us tonight, build us, make us mighty men. In the name of Jesus Christ. My first encouragement tonight is that, please listen. Never get familiar with what God is doing in this place. When you become familiar with anything, you commonize it and it stops blessing you. When you become familiar with anything at all, you lose the anointing, you lose the grace, you lose the efficacy in that thing. I know that we've been coming here doing this again and again. Please, can you play strings? Years after years after years, we've been doing this thing. But there is something the Holy Spirit is doing. And it's important for us to study, study what He's doing in our lives. Don't just get caught up. Many of us have incorporated this day in our activities and once it's Friday we know that it's dedicated coming for koinonia and so on and so forth but I really want us to understand that God is doing something if we do not understand this it will be difficult to submit to the dealings and the teachings of the spirit these teachings are supposed is a programming is producing something out of our lives hallelujah God is making objects of praise out of our lives. And although this is like a factory, there is a making process. If you stay on course, not even you can stop what you will become. There's an army rising up. You're that army rising up there's an army rising up 
I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, use me as your battle pass. I don't just want to waste my time listening and listening for nothing. Use me as your battle axe. The Bible says, ye are my battle axe and my instruments of war. God is training us to wreak havoc in the kingdom of darkness concerning our lives and our destinies. Go ahead and pray. Use me as a financial battle axe, as an apostolic battle axe, as a prophetic battle axe. Let my edges be so sharpened, O oh God, that I will do mighty things for the kingdom. Let my generation bless the Lord that I was born. I submit to your dealings. I submit to your word. I allow it to transform my mind. I allow it to influence my decisions. one cry in my heart every time I prepare to come here and that cry is that nothing and no one will stop what God is doing in our lives you may not realize the extent of the revolution that is happening from this city and from this place and through our lives but when God is done with us then the world will know they will see an example of what God can do with men who are yielded. It may not look like it. The Bible says, I reckon, Romans 8:18, 8, that the sufferings of this present time, the constraints, the sacrifices you may have to pay, the, the resistance, the pain that you will have to go through, are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. I can see with the eyes of my spirit. I can hear the sound of the new church rising. I can see the rising in the thousands. They're coming from afar, coming from afar. I can hear the sound of revival, and I know. That the hand of God is upon us. Yeah. And I hear the sound of revival spreading all over, spreading all over. Oh. Oh God, 
that which has been written in the volume of the book. Let our generation be salvaged from the bondage of corruption. We make ourselves available. Prune us. Build us. Forge us, O God. Make us mighty men of power. Make us men of wisdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight I want to share something that I believe will change our lives forever. And I want us to please pay attention. See, when, when you understand the ways of God, you will love God more. When you understand the principles of the kingdom, and you see how that your life becomes predictable. Hallelujah. Then you will know that no power in existence can really tie down your destiny. It doesn't matter what the disadvantage has been. Just stay. There is a force. The Bible says how forcible are right words. There is a force that no power, not your background, not your mistakes, not your limitations can resist. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to just pray, just this one prayer, and say, Lord, help me to be attentive tonight. I throw away familiarity. I embrace your word with the heart of a child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the Lord laid this message tonight, I was very excited because I know that this message tonight will apply to almost everyone, if not everyone. God has been teaching us all through this month of July strategies how to come into the realm of greatness, influence, to contend for that relevance. And I pray that these words that we receive will not stand against us in the days to come. That 10 years from now you will not stand and still be a failure and watch those who listen to what they are listening now. The same thing you are hearing. Many of our parents ignored opportunities like that. They kept laughing and mocking at those who were serious. And look at the heritage many of them have passed on to us right now. Suffering, pain, trouble, curses, yokes. They had every opportunity that every great man has today. But like many of us are doing, they did not pay attention. Being distracted by all kinds of things. But tonight I pray that no matter how hardened your heart is, that for once you will love your destiny enough to pay attention. The beautiful thing about life is no one will pay your price for you. No matter how stubborn you are, no matter how hardened you are, you can argue today, you can laugh and scorn at what God is doing, but the day of reckoning will come. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. This is a this is a bailout. It's, it's an exemption program. God is exempting many of us from so many things. Hallelujah. She She Thank you for your love. We are not better than those who are going around in ignorance, confused. Listen, 
with what you know now, I'd like you to imagine the way your life would have been without the knowledge you have now. Did you know that there are many people just like you used to be and they are equally confident, believing that there is a great destiny waiting for them? Hallelujah. But we thank God for His grace. Galatians 6 verse 9. I want to share something very powerful. Two people please. Mighty revelation tonight. Any two people? Just two gentlemen. Come sir. Thank you. Please stand here. Any other person? Yes sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. By the grace of God we have been taught the revelation of the things that God desires to do in our lives. Please follow me. We have been taught that God has an agenda and that he seeks to make us ambassadors. That there is a prophetic destiny for everyone. Say after me, I have a prophetic destiny. Say it, I have a prophetic destiny. And this is a revelation of the prophecy over our lives. Hallelujah. That there is something God wants to do. There is something God wants to make out of us. There is a debt that we owe our generation that we must pay in our lifetime. And that God is trusting us. Hallelujah. So this is prophecy. And on the other side, we have the manifestation and the fulfillment of this prophecy. Are you following me tonight? When we begin to walk in the experience of that which has been spoken concerning us. So many of us have been taught what it is that God has written and said concerning you and your life and family and destiny. And through the eyes of prophecy we can see that which God is going to do. We have in our minds a picture of the kind of destiny. But what I want to teach tonight is how to manage the seasons between prophecy and their manifestation. This is the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest revelation that you need to cap up these teachings on influence and greatness and the kingdom. Because it is through this journey, brothers and sisters, that many fall by the wayside. Are you getting my point? It is through this journey that many never make it there. there it's, it's like a marathon. So many people, hundreds of people standing with all of their, their athlete apparels. But in the final analysis at the end, only maybe less than one or two or three percent of those people ever arrive at the finish line. And I want us to finish strong. Hallelujah. Many of us are at this season of our lives and we've been praying, fasting and say, Lord, explain to me what meaneth these things? What is the mystery behind the things that are happening in my life? What season am I in? Please listen tonight because God is about to speak to you. Galatians 6 verse 9. Please read everybody. One more time. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in what? Hold on. In what? There is a timing in the spirit called due season. For in due season. Not any time. Do not be weary in well-doing. I'm building up from what I shared last week. For in due season. We will reap. But there is a condition. What is the condition? If we... That means... If we faint, what will happen? Although the due season will come... But we will not reap. Hallelujah. So there are two things there. There is a due season. And there is a call... For endurance. Call for strength. Call for continuity. Hallelujah. One of the most disturbing aspects of 
the kingdom the principles of the kingdom is the concept of timings and seasons there are very few messages in the body of christ that attempt to address the issue of divine timings and the seasons of men's life yet the bible talks a lot about the things that happen under the sun and that anything under the sun is governed by times and seasons say after me times and seasons ecclesiastes chapter 3 gives us an extensive description of the revelation and the power of times and seasons and how that these things hold the key to our manifestation in this earth in this realm and that means if we do not understand spiritual timings if we do not understand seasons we may be equipped with the principles but we will faint because we do not realize that god is working even at those times and seasons so i want to teach on certain things that will bless us tonight the bible says for us not to be weary in well doing hallelujah he said for in due season we will reap last week i began to talk about how that the bible gives us a mystery that time and chance happen to them you remember that teaching hallelujah and so that our 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 part of the equation is not to sit down and keep waiting for the time the bible already gives us a guarantee that time and chance will happen to everyone so rather than sitting down and waiting where will my turn come we spend the time doing what sharpening our abilities so that when that time comes we will be ushered into the realm of greatness never to come out again if you believe it say amen let me talk about two concepts and then we'll build number one write this word down waiting w-a-i-t-i-n-g waiting one word that gets believers scared in the kingdom many people have preached all kinds of messages but tonight i want us to examine these concepts i do my best by the leadership of the spirit to make sure that we leave no stone unturned as far as the journey to our destiny and our success is concerned waiting one of the hardest things that can happen to a believer is to enter a season of waiting it can be so frustrating it can be so painful that it will take the ability and the strength of the spirit for you to survive that season please take note of what i'm sharing no matter how anointed you are no matter how great you are if there is a prophecy upon your life hear me between that prophecy and the manifestation of that prophecy a time will come in your life when you will step into this season of waiting and it's important i teach you how it works in the kingdom otherwise when you enter that season you may be so confused and you will abort destiny not knowing what is happening behind the scenes is somebody getting blessed already because many of us right now are in this phase as i speak right now there are individuals who are at these periods of their life and truly they are confused because this season rattles your convictions everything you have believed comes under the test when you come to this season your ideologies your beliefs your prayer life your dexterity in the spirit your endurance everything you have ever acquired through the world will come on that test and if you cannot stand that test brothers and sisters you may stand from here and see canaan but you may never enter it the fact that you have seen the vision the fact that you have had the dream is no guarantee the fact that god spoke to you is no guarantee that you will arrive there is someone hearing what i'm saying you saw yourself a mighty evangelist you saw yourself a mighty apostle in your dreams you see crusades you see a lot of things in your dreams you have seen that you are a financial apostle you've seen yourself doing mighty things for the kingdom i want to announce to you tonight that between 
the prophecy and its manifestation as stages and principles and one of those stages is called the period of waiting and if you do not understand this brothers and sisters you may never arrive there Proverbs 13 verse 12 Proverbs 13 verse 12 Let's hurry up tonight Open your heart Hallelujah Now the Bible explains to us You see, look up please I've spent my life not just studying on the kingdom But studying about man Because I'm a man and I, I like to know what, what my, the components of my, my, my creation, my build up. I like to know what my strengths are. Not as a, my personality, but the general man. I like to know who man is. What are his limitations? What are his predicaments? What are the vulnerabilities that can befall man? This revelation helps me to know where to lean on God more. Hallelujah. And here and there I have found certain inevitable weaknesses that are fabricated in man. And it will take us understanding those limitations. And leaning on the strength of God to supplement for our inadequacies at that time. Otherwise we will not last. One of it is this simple scripture that many of us have read again and again. One to read. Hope deferred makes what? When you postpone hope, when expectations are not met, the Bible says it can affect your spirit man. Are you reading it here? The word heart, there's the same word spirit. When you hope for certain things, by our natural design, we love winning. We love achieving. We love accomplishing things. Are you getting my point? We love seeing a sign of progress in our lives. Is someone getting what I'm, I'm, I'm saying tonight? The Bible says, when that hope that we have, that drives us into destiny, when those expectations that we have are not achieved, when it is deferred, that means when it is postponed, the Bible says it has an effect, not just in your physical body. It does not just create fatigue in your physical body. It affects even your spirit man. It said, but when desire cometh, it is a tree of life. When you achieve your goals, and you hold on to it there is the joy that fulfillment and accomplishment brings in every man hallelujah that means when the waiting period between your prophecy and its manifestation gets too long if you do not understand the technology and the provision that has been made in the spirit to carry you through that process you may never arrive there. Are you getting what I'm saying? Although anointed, although born again, the Bible tells us that there is, a, there is an inadequacy that is in man. That man does not have the, the ability to endure, to suffer long forever. That means a time comes in the equation of your life when your patience gets stretched out no matter how good and godly you are that means there must be a technology in the spirit that is able to hold you and take you to the place of destiny say amen now there are two dimensions to waiting and i want us to look at it number one is that waiting so that we don't confuse ourselves here waiting can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in Christ. We must get this. It's very important. Waiting can be a demonic strategy. Please write it. It can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in Christ. 
I must balance this straight up so that many of us do not sit down and allow the devil delay our destinies forever and then get convinced because if the word of God is not rightly divided the devil can use that it is written and convince many of us now who should be preparing for miracle service next week and say Lord an end comes to this there are certain periods of waiting that are not divine they are not initiated by God at all are you getting my point now they are strategies from the kingdom of darkness to delay and limit us from entering our prophetic destiny that kind of waiting is called delay write it down the name given to that kind of waiting is delay delay satan's strategy to limit you and hinder you and stop you Paul said once and again I desire to come to you but Satan hindered us Satan can hinder men then number two the second dimension is that delay can be a divine orchestration please get this you must get this that there are two dimensions to look at waiting in the kingdom all of our teaching is within the context of the kingdom that there is a waiting process and period that is orchestrated by the kingdom of darkness to limit us and the name given to it is delay but that there is a waiting period there are these seasons that are divine orchestrations lamentations 3 25 can we look at it very quickly is someone getting blessed already thank you jesus sorry guys you soon go and sit down okay just go just go just go oh, bless you so you can be writing it's very important that you write lamentations 3 25 are we there everyone please look up and read before you continue writing one to read the lord is good unto them that do what not wait on him wait for him wait for him it's a very difficult thing to wait very very difficult and this divinely orchestrated period of waiting is called process write it in the kingdom it's called process process so there is a difference between waiting as a process to your destiny and waiting as delay from the kingdom of darkness to destroy you and you must sustain the ability to discern so that you know whether to align and receive grace and might from god or to stand and take authority over the activities of darkness hallelujah process very important you will come to this period of your life whether you pray for it or not is part of the things that you will find and i'll be showing you from scripture how that many people messed up when they got to this season let me give you one example remember the nation of israel hallelujah they came out there was a prophecy given to moses even moses their leader did not enter the promised land look up did you know that god never told moses he was going to die on the way is that true the prophecy that was given to moses was that he was going to lead the people from the land of bondage into the land flowing with milk and honey god never told him somebody will take out the baton but between egypt brothers and sisters and canaan only two people from that generation were able to make it only two people they all had the prophecy they rejoiced they joined moses after the the, the parting of the red sea to sing i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his rider because it had not stretched their patience too much but they came to a point 
Look at all the things they did in the wilderness because they did not understand this operation. And listen, if you do not learn the lesson, you will do the same thing. It's easy to talk about them. Thank you, Jesus Christ. A few thoughts about waiting that I want you to note. Number one, in the kingdom, please make sure you note that we are talking with respect to the kingdom. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. For many of us, our concept of waiting is to stand still, known to be motionless. But that's not the way it works in the kingdom. When you enter the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, it does not mean absence of progress. It also does not mean absence of advancement. That when you are in the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, it's not the same thing as saying you are in one spot, not making progress. To you, you think you are in one spot because there is no physical evidence to measure your advancement. But I'm telling you right now that behind the scene, there is a lot of advancement taking place. Number two, waiting in the kingdom is not necessarily delay. It is the process of preparation. I'm taking out time to read it because I don't want us to miss it. You'll notice in the last few weeks I've been teaching very carefully, reading almost directly from my notebook here because I don't want us to confuse and miss words and then for our online people, I want them to follow on thoroughly. Waiting is not necessarily delay. It is the process of preparation. Number three. Look up. I want to explain something now about waiting. One of the biggest things I've seen in the lives of people, and please listen, God is about to minister directly to us now, is that because we have expectations for something great about our life, we postpone all of our joy and gladness and shift it. Are you getting my point? To the future. So that we will take advantage of that joy when we arrive. And then we starve ourselves of joy during the waiting period. Are you getting my point? But the Bible tells us that the vehicle that carries strength in the kingdom is joy. I want to show you why a lot of people never arrive. During the waiting process, one of the things that we are vulnerable to face is the absence or the diminishing of joy. I'll give you an example. A brother wants to get married or a lady wants to get married. God has told you you will get married. Is that true? And you pass all the joy and say on that glorious day, when I wear my suit, you will see the dance I've never danced before. I would dance David's dance and laugh. But between now and that point, you will see the lady looking frowny, angry at everybody. Why? Why is God delaying me? And so we kill our joy. Are you getting what I'm saying? And we wait and we pack up everything and we keep pushing the joy to the future. And we never get blessed with the moment. That expectation kills our joy. We cry day and night. Oh God, when will I become a millionaire? I'm seeing it. Let me just enter this thing. And you see joyless believers. Angry and offended at God. Note this tonight. That waiting should never postpone your joy. You can be joyful while waiting. Never wait until you arrive. Your joy gets complete when you arrive. But that joy should start and go with you all the way. Because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is the strength that you will need. 
There is a difference between joy and happiness. If I give you one million now, there is every reason to be happy. That's not joy. Hallelujah. But joy is of the Holy Ghost. It's the strength and the sense of rest and merriment that comes based on the conviction of God's integrity. So when there is no physical evidence, you are joyful. He said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Look up, please. How many of us have killed our joy? There are so many people. You see a lady of 20 years looking like 50. Why? Say, I'm not in a relationship. God spoke to me. Am I the worst person in the world? No joy. You stand outside tomorrow morning and watch all the people that move. 90% of people are joyless people. They get up in the morning, there's no sense of joy and merriment. You ask them why. And they give you all kinds of legitimate reason. And they believe that they are justified on the strength of those reasons not to be joyful. And they never arrive at their destinations. Is God speaking to someone tonight? That's what changed our parents. Many of them, when they got married like us, they were happy people. Eventually, their expectations. They expected that when the first child is five years, they would have been millionaires, established in their dream jobs, having their own homes. Unfortunately, they had wishes, but they did not understand the principles that will make it happen. So 15 years down the line, they are still crying for rent. There's nothing there. And you find your father old and angry. Now, don't insult him. It's the frustration, the pain and the bitterness that has been fast forwarded. Every new year, people are happy. Do you know why they are happy? Because it makes them forget about the previous year. And for the first one week, they dance. Many churches have all kinds of thanksgiving. By February, everybody is angry. Oh Lord, not again. Will this year pass without the child coming? Oh Lord, so this is how the husband will not come. This is how my admission will not come again. And then our joy. The devil keeps sucking out every ounce of joy. And by the middle of the year, everyone is already frustrated and cast out spiritually. You must sustain a revelation and a technology in the spirit to make sure that part of the things that suffer of all the things that will suffer during this waiting period your joy should not be one of them are you getting what i'm saying because your joy will culminate to your strength god is speaking to someone tonight waiting in the kingdom is an acknowledgement of divine timing when you wait in the kingdom when you follow through that period you are acknowledging that god works with times and seasons and that you submit yourself to the process of how god makes men great you are everything everything is you you are everything everything joy waiting is an acknowledgement of divine timing everybody say divine timing say after me there is a season in my life and destiny when I will manifest say one more time there is a season and a timing there is a season of showing forth there is a season of manifestation. There is a season of display. Yes. You must recognize that there is a season. Brothers and sisters, it's called due season. Everyone say due season. Due season. The second word I want us to consider tonight before I begin to build 
is the word impatience. Write it down. Impatience. What is impatience? Patience that has been exhausted. Patience that has been exhausted. Tonight I speak like Prophet Elijah that that cruise of oil that is left will not run dry. There is a technology that will refill it tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, impatience is deadly and is dangerous to your destiny. Write it down and underline it. Impatience is deadly. I, I think that's one of the greatest keys in my opinion. One of the greatest keys that the devil has used to destroy Africans, Nigerians and young people in general. Impatience. Impatience. What does it mean to be impatient? Impatience means getting ahead of God. Getting ahead of God. That's what it means to be impatient. You run ahead of God. You run ahead of His timing for your life. Impatience is a dangerous thing. God is speaking to us tonight. Because many of us are where we are at this point of our lives because of impatience. There are many of us that stress is almost killing us right now because of impatience. Hallelujah. Very, very important. You are a young lady. You are just 21. You want to kill yourself. If I don't marry by 2014, let it not be that I'm a Christian. And you are yoking yourself. You fasted for two weeks, which is supposed to be wonderful if it were for a just cause. But at 21, there's all kinds of pressure. And you can't wait. There's no, there's no patience. Impatience has driven many of us into all sorts of things. Everybody say, I receive grace to be patient. Abraham was a man in scripture who the tragedy of impatience caught up with him. Just write the scripture. We may not read it for time's sake. I want to hurry up and I want us to finish very fast. In Genesis chapter 16 from verse 1 to 4. Well, let's just, let's just look at it very quickly. Genesis 16, 1 to 4. That man, Abraham, God had spoken to him. Now it was taking too long the result was not coming. And the Bible says in the 16th chapter, Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. So this was an issue of barrenness versus the promise of God that he would be the father of all nations. And she had a what? Please read. And she had what? And that handmaid was an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. I want to show you the danger of impatience. Every time impatience begins to grow in your life, you are about to wreck and jeopardize your destiny. Because very soon, there will be something around you that can be an option. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people have missed out on God's best for them because they could not wait. Two days to enter God's best. We made all kinds of decisions in our lives. Now Sarai said to Abraham, Behold now, the Lord had restrained me. Are you seeing her interpretation? That God had restrained from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid, that it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham did what? Because Abraham had been eyeing the girl since. It's just that he didn't have the courage. How will he now tell his wife? Are you getting my point now? Impatience will create pictures around your life. 
if by August a godly brother does not come, God is my witness. I will go anywhere. Even if it's my village and carry anybody. The Bible says, Sarah told Abraham, I'm sure they have had quarrels and quarrels. And Sarah said, okay, this is a handmaid. She's younger than me. She can still be fruitful. Go ahead and sleep with her. And Abraham said, now you are talking. Abba, now you are talking. Let's, let's make this promise come to pass. Abraham did not argue. The young lady did not argue. Guess what? God too didn't say anything. The fact that you are doing things wrong and going ahead does not mean you are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Did you see that the lady got pregnant? The fact that you compromise and it works does not mean it's God that made it work. There are many things that can happen in this life without God. Marriage can happen without God. You can make money without God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can get the job without God. Oh yes. You can get the admission without God. It's easy to compromise and get the blessing. But every time impatience leads you to take action, get ready because an Ishmael will be born. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Look at verse 11. 11 and 12. Let's see the tragedy of this union. The product of the inability to wait for the word of the Lord. To wait for the seasons. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child. Listen. And shall bear a son. And shall call his name Ishmael. Because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Verse 12. And he will be what? Was that what she planned for? Abraham, was that the blessing you were told? He said, this union will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. That means this troubler will be everywhere. Till today, the world has not recovered from the union less than one day of pleasure as a result of impatience jeopardize the generation who is about to jeopardize his destiny here There's, there are people here that are about to make decisions as a product of impatience is someone getting blessed tonight the nation of Israel in Exodus chapter 32 when they came out of Egypt, Moses went upon the mountain for 40 days. Look at me. It was a waiting period. Is that true? They didn't see any progress. Whereas Moses was on the mountain intercussing with God. So something was happening that they could not see it did not mean nothing was happening. Brothers and sisters, it looks like your life has been stagnant for years. You think you are stagnant, but if God should open your eyes to see the giants you have been conquering in the spirit. God is really ministering to someone tonight. It's not the way you have been looking at it. It's not the way you have been looking at it. Physically, you have not been in school for three years. But there is a progression. The Lord has been doing something. The job did not come. Five years after graduation, you are still struggling. And you believe you are like every other jobless person. Is that true? There is an investment of the Spirit in you. Only if you believe that waiting is not equal to delay in the kingdom. The nation of Israel could not wait. And what did they tell Aaron? Let's look at that verse. Exodus 32. Very quickly. Is someone getting blessed? Impatience can jeopardize your destiny. You can make mistakes that you may only be able to walk through. But never ever be able to cut out of your life. 
Hallelujah. And they told Aaron, they said, Moses is wasting our time. We don't even know whether he's dead or not. Please, we brought gold out of the temple. We remember that while we were slaves, we saw the Egyptians worshipping a god of gold. And it was the god that brought them out. Oh yeah, Aaron, come and build us this idol. Let's celebrate this idol. We can't wait. If there is God in heaven, why will he keep us in the wilderness for, for this long? 40 days. We didn't see Moses. He didn't tell us anything. And we are waiting. Let us build an idol. And while God was with Moses, advocating for the same people, they were destroying their own destiny by themselves. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings. They forced Aaron. They forced Aaron. Which are in the ears of your wives and of your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me. Verse 3. And all the people took the golden earrings. They were so desperate to come out of that season. They said, is it not earring? Take. Oh yeah, all the women remove your earrings. Yes, we need to carve out very fast. Never find yourself trying to help God in a process that is exclusively within His power to pass you through and bring you to a place of greatness. Many of us try to help God. Uza tried to hold the ark. He died, yet the ark never fell. Let's look at just one verse there and then we'll continue. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it into a graving tool. After he made it into what? A molten calf. And they said, This be thy God, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land. So after two years, the child doesn't come. After praying and praying, Oh, we trust God. And then somebody comes to say, there's one man who, it's not like I'm suggesting that you should go there. Me, my heart, it's me. Praise God. The man can pray. It's not like a habal. It's not exactly, it's not a pastor. It's not a habal. But he used to help people. You say, really? Two years ago, when they told you, say, no, 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 I'm a child of God. Two years later, you are almost gassed at that. You say, eh, eh, let me talk with my husband about it. And you know, men, when you are talking, it looks like they will say no. And then you're talking and you say, where is the man? You say, have you seen him? Who has he, who has he given uh, a child to? Say, Let's be careful with all these people. Hallelujah. I counsel people. And I am amazed at how much people fall when it looks like the word of God dwindles over their life just a little. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one lady who kept sending me text messages almost every day for one week. She said she believes that there are instructions I will give her for her marriage. I said, my dear, there's no instruction. I'm, I'm spending my life for hours shouting on Friday. Go and listen to Relationship and Family Life series part one, two, three. The next day, they say she feels in her spirit that there is an instruction that will just open. You see, all these things is, is, is in innocence, but it's an act of impatience. Impatience will make you hear what God did not say. Impatience will create a road that was not of God. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Impatience will make you say yes to a guy that two weeks into the relationship, you say, please, was I dreaming? Who did I say yes to? guy will say sweetheart you say me i said yes to you guys say you said yes now what is all this again and ladies please be one i don't know why as i'm talking i'm coming into all this relationship thing. maybe god is speaking to some people through it. hallelujah ladies don't find yourself putting pressure on any lady and say answer him now you said it's none of your business if it's not you, they ask advice when you are invited. Otherwise, stay away and pray. Many of us just come and say, this guy is my personal person. I know him. I said you will be in the relationship. And many people jeopardize their destinies. Is he born again? He's a nice person. 
Does he love the word of God? He's okay. He doesn't smoke. He, he used to smoke and drink before God. Abba, in the last one year, even him, he told me. He doesn't lie to me, honestly. If he, you Abba me, he loves me too much to lie. Until the day he pounds your face when Abel resurrects and you find out that, that Cain, Cain, sorry, Cain is alive and active. And that guy beats the living daylight out of you. Or you enter his room and see another lady's clothes and the rest. And he says, so what? I'm a man. You said you're a Christian. You will not sleep with me. I come. You are still my wife, but I have to find something to be doing before we get married. Impatience. Don't just laugh. I hope you are getting the message. It's a very serious message. Impatience brought the world under under all kinds of terrible things. Someone getting blessed. Let's hurry up. During the waiting period, certain things usually happen and I want you to take note of them. Number one is that you have the tendency to get weary. Especially when you have obeyed every principle you know and there is no obvious change. Hallelujah. There are so many people that, that send me text messages and all of that and they say, Sir, I have been, I've been paying my tithe. God knows. I've been faithful I've been paying my tithe. I've sown seeds. I've done everything. I'm, I'm a worker in my church. Maybe a member of the, the, the decoration or whatever. I'm a member in this and that. Why is it not working? I've done everything. I've listened to every koinonia message. God is my witness. And I've been working according to the principles of the kingdom. So weariness can set in. Especially when you are truly obeying the principles. There are many of us who have truly been tithing. You've truly been giving. You've been submitting your prayer request, miracle service after miracle service. Nothing seems to have happened. But listen. Number two, your joy begins to fade. When weariness sets in, your joy, like I said earlier on, begins to fade. Number three, impatience sets in. I'm giving, you to it, I'm giving it to you now systematically so that you understand that these are the things that characterize seasons of waiting. The tendencies, the vulnerabilities. Number four, which is the most dangerous part, is that you begin to consider options and alternatives other than that which God has given you. Options. 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 Usually those options are devilish. Usually those options may even look spiritual. But that's not the blueprint of God for your life. When Jesus met Peter, look at me. When Jesus met Peter, I told him, come, follow me. I will make you a fisher of men. Is that true? But when Jesus died, just for three days, three days, Peter did not see Jesus for three days. His patience could not pass 72 hours. And in John 21, he said, Oh boy, I go a fishing. And the disciples said, We go with you. In other words, let's go back to a, an option that we know something about. And when Jesus saw him in chapter 15, thereabout, he said, Lovest thou me more than this? How many of us have given God options? God told you, You are going to be a great man of God. But he said, be patient. You were not patient. Now you have started a fellowship that is almost killing you. Only you and your best friend who is tired. He wants to leave. It's just that he doesn't know what to do with you. Only two of you. Every evening, only two of The person is tired. Because although you are genuinely called, but you cannot wait for timings and seasons. Hallelujah. I remember one, one pastor gentleman years ago, that guy is still struggling till today. And if he doesn't adjust, he may still be struggling till only God knows when. I remember his fellowship years ago. 
appointed him and they said he was supposed to be chief usher it was such an embarrassment to his personality and he said god did not tell him in the blueprint of his ministerial call that he will be chief usher if they cannot honor the grace of god upon his life and give him something honorable by honorable he means maybe president of the fellowship or something close to it see that many of us have etched ourselves out of the preparations of the spirit will come there because we have given ourselves options options hallelujah god gave you signs he gave you symbols he gave you tokens that will signify to you when certain things are his will you have not seen them the equation has not lined up if god tells you something 80 percent is still not god you must wait until it looks like god it's amazing how impatience can make a thing look like it is god whereas it is not of god and so somebody comes and says will you like to be a pastor in our church and they say thank you jesus i knew it you people are underutilizing my anointing Anytime God did not send you, be sure that you will not see his hand. See, let me tell you, this is one of the reasons why people move ahead of God and they keep struggling until the season comes where God catches up with them and they call it breakthrough. Then they make another mistake again and they wait. Why don't you walk with God? It's dangerous to walk ahead of God. Hallelujah. Impatience. Some of our parents have put our families in trouble because of impatience. I must build a house this year. I must build a house this year. Because my colleagues have built houses. Me too, I must build a house. I must buy three cars this year. One for me, one for my wife, and one for the children. And some of you are part of the sponsors of this impatience. Daddy, do it. You can make it. I believe in you. And now we put all our parents under all sorts of nonsense pressure. Because there is no impatience. There, there's no patience, sorry. Hallelujah. Some of us are here. If you want to wear tomorrow's clothes today, get set to walk naked tomorrow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I must buy a suit of 100,000. You carry everything God has blessed you with now, home and abroad. You bought one suit and you will die for the remaining part of your life. Whereas that money came to buy books. Is someone getting blessed? And then the trouble is the jet age and technology has made matters worse. Hallelujah. We have 15 year old millionaires. 20 year old millionaires. So everybody just says, I, I must make it in this Nigeria. If there is a kick, I must cut my share or stab whoever is standing close to my share until that piece of my kick comes to me. And you know, there are all kinds of confessions and prayers in the church that encourage this lust. Kill every enemy that is covering your kick, your portion of the kick. And you know, we do all kinds of things in the name of prophetic activities. Events sponsored by hell to push us into impatience. Say, I receive grace to be patient. There are many of us here. Sister, your life would not be in the mess that it is if only you were patient. You said, all my colleagues are in relationships. And one guy just came, one of the lonely ones among the friends. Say, okay, I'm doing too. And look, from that day till now, it's been four or five years of hell on earth because you attach yourself to Hagar and Ishmael is the product. Tonight God is delivering someone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say I will wait. Everyone say it, I will wait. I receive grace to wait. There is a difference between delay and process spirit if you allow the devil to destroy your life listen let me tell you I, I shared with you a few stories last week I remember when a few years ago I would be invited to go and minister then there was no protocol no nothing and 
I will prepare fast and pray, right? And go and minister. And at the end of it, the people will not even say, Oh, there is an honorarium who want to appreciate you. And I mean, I will fast for days as if I'm preaching in an international conference somewhere. And then I'll go and sometimes it's when I arrive that they'll push people in front. Praise God. And say there is a place. And I remember, I will never forget, two pastors, they came and met me. They said, man of God, the kind of anointing you have, there are some bishops that do not even have it. Why are you underutilizing this anointing? Many of us will hear that thing and say it's true. It's true. I'll never forget through the rain, through the sun, through whatever. I will risk myself, pay my own transport and get there. I will never forget there was a gentleman from BLW. It was his suit I used to borrow when they invite me for ministration. I will borrow his suit in Suleiman and then Jankfa had one nice loafers. His brother gave him. He will give me the loafers. The only thing I had was maybe socks or something. You are laughing. Don't be carried away by suits and all these things. Because many of see the trouble with men of God is they never open up the process that led them to that place. They make it look easy. As if it just happened by one prophetic word. And many of us are already running. You are already calculating your offering and your honorarium by Christmas. You better wake up. The, the journey is still far in Jesus' name. It's not that I'm not prophesying that <laughs> I'm used to saying in Jesus' name, forgive me. Hallelujah. You must learn to wait. You must learn to wait. And I will show you why. We are going to wrap up when I reveal to you why this process is important in the kingdom. I'll never forget one time when I got an honorarium of 10,000. I couldn't believe it. It was like I was dreaming. 10,000 for preaching something that is my passion that I will live and die for it. Brothers and sisters, a time came in my life when even me, I started talking to myself. I said, ah, but God, why are people doing this to me? People took me for granted they would have list of ministers that they are bringing for programs. But they'll find out that the cost implication for holding those graces is so much. And then they'll run to this scapegoat called Joshua Selman. Sometimes two days to the conference, they will invite me and I'll go to prayer. I'll say, Lord, and the Lord will say, go. It looked like I was a fool. But one day came. Due season. Due season. You do not qualify to enter your future if you cannot wait. Who is God speaking to tonight? God gave you a small business under 100,000. You've not been effective there. You're already dreaming. In the name of Jesus, in two months, I'll be riding a Jaguar. I'll be, you better stop dreaming and settle down and understand how things happen in the kingdom. Tame your lost and line it up with the seasons of the spirit there is a difference between speed and foolishness are you getting what i'm saying many people step into seasons that is not god that li let's listen if you force a door to open whether it's god that opened it or not it will open but the trouble is when they ask you who sent you you will turn back and find out that you've been going alone Hallelujah. So what do you do as you await your due season? This is the crux of this teaching tonight. What do you do when your due season is yet to appear? When that waiting period gets so long? Lord, will the child come? Will the breakthrough come? When will you change my story? Every time I go to pray, you show me a great destiny. 
you told me a day will come i will minister before thousands i will be an international evangelist you are giving me an international apostolic or prophetic ministry but as it is i have not yet seen it number one i'm giving you the formula brothers and sisters if you keep this secret you will survive the process between prophecy and manifestation you will find out that while men are falling by the wayside there will be a strength that will carry you number one during your waiting period you should do the following recognize that there is a divine timing and a due season it comforts you to know that your wait is not forever because God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8 won't turn there tells us that there is a time for everything under the sun the Bible says John remained in the wilderness until his what season of appearance everyone prophesy to yourself my season of appearance is coming prophesy it my season of appearance is coming can you turn it into a prayer in one minute I may not look like it now but my God there is a making and my season of appearance will come I have a portion among the great and the hand of God will bring me there I will stay through I may not be able to preach now I may not have money in my pocket now but there is a due season it has been written by prophecy not the witches in my village can stop it no power in existence and I choose to wait I choose to wait there is a due season when I will drive the cars there is a due season when men will run after me with jobs there is a due season when so many men will come to ask my hand in marriage there is a due season when my own family will dedicate their own building oh yes time and chance happen to them all my turn is coming i know this for sure a day will come i will know what it feels like to be a kingdom millionaire a day will come that wedding ring will enter my hand too but meanwhile i wait a day will come i will travel abroad as though i'm walking from my house and going outside i will enter the plane a day will come i will wear the convocation gown a day will come i will finally pass the job there is a due season the child will come barrenness does not last forever prophesy in one minute shake away unbelief shake away impatience a day will come I will have peace with my husband I know it's a demonic challenge there are ancestral powers causing this family problem but there is a due season when the hand of God will visit my family I know but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded I am persuaded I may not see the wind I may not see the cloud it does not look like it will rain but the hand of Jehovah that hand that regulates times and seasons my turn will come I will be on television my turn will come the healing anointing will finally work my time will come when my profiting will appear it's called my season of appearing it's called my season of appearing hallelujah recognize 
that everything under the sun works by timings. So when men are pushing you into seasons you are not ready for, listen, I cannot tell you, God gave me an instruction and God told me, he said, that he would use koinonia messengers like angels and messengers of fire and send them across the nations and God specifically said we should never not in this season of ministry begin to sell tapes and do all of that I cannot tell you how many people have called to say man of God you are robbing your ministry of millions of naira I said I appreciate your interest but there is a season are you hearing what I'm saying so many people have spoken to me come and open koinonia branch in abuja come and open in lagos come and do this come and do that i told you in 2006 after our crusade in Jos, it was so powerful the pfn said that we should come and open a branch of the ministry they were willing to give pastors so that we would train and have an auditorium i went to god and god said you would die that was exactly what i told them that god said i would die Listen, many men of God today, do you know why ministry is killing them? Although God called them, they have opened other seasons for themselves. God never spoke to them to start a church. They started a church. Now they are wondering, no money, no nothing, no grace. There are many people, God told them, you are an evangelist. They said, I need a base so that I will have money. As though God cannot finance his work. Are you seeing how it has gotten a lot of people into trouble? Never do anything without asking God. Even if God said yes yesterday, ask him today again. Three days for us to start Koinonia, I went on a retreat. Three days I went on a retreat. And I said, Lord, it's not that I'm doubting you, but I want to confirm again. For adventure, it was my flesh that minister to me. Hallelujah. When you see what the hand of God is upon, even if you are a critic, you will know that there is God in what is happening. Hallelujah. What season in your life have you opened prematurely as a result of impatience? I know you are anointed MOG who asked you to start a healing ministry. You started gathering sick people and telling all of them, write what is wrong with you and lift it up. You want to become a great man. Everybody you laid hands on, nobody was healed. The people are angry. They are planning to beat you by the next healing service. You better go back to God and ask questions. Hallelujah. Many people have produced albums prematurely they produce five albums not even their immediate environment no they they traveled abroad took the albums it didn't sell because the season see i taught you last week that favor is one of the clearest signs that god is with you hallelujah recognize that there is a due season Sister, be delivered tonight. The husband will come. You are not the first to get married. Neither will you be the last. Brother, I know you are almost 30 years old. Relax. It's better to enter a profitable relationship at 30 than to enter nonsense that you sweat for three years before the arm of God will come to deliver you. Some of you see people in relationship and you admire them. Go and talk to them in truth and find out. Some of them, as they are going, they are just tired. They, it's just that they don't know what to do again with their lives. There is a child. They are already married. Say preparation. Many people want to drive cars. I must buy a car. I must buy a car. By force, the word of God is working. Nobody ever drove a car in my family. I must be the one and it must be this year. Calm down. Look, trust me. We prophesy all the time and my, my greatest joy 
is to see everyone blessed spiritually, financially, socially, and so on and so forth. But then, God will judge me if I tell you that after prophecy, it will just happen to you the next day. It's not every aspect of your life that will happen like that. There are seasons. Everybody says seasons. There is seed. There is time. There is harvest. Let's hurry up. Number two. Every time you are about to get weary because the waiting period to your breakthrough is so long and it looks like will God ever come? Will I ever get to Canaan? After crossing the Red Sea, while you are rejoicing, thinking that's all, you find out that there is another mighty battle waiting for you. Listen. The second key is to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. It's amazing how we easily forget the things that God has done in our lives. And we focus on the things that He has not done. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, this house is too small. We are tired. We need a change. Remember when you were managing with one room and that one room it was your friend that gave you. Although God has told you you are going to a new house, but in the interim, when impatience wants to set in, when weariness wants to set in, count the faithfulness of God. Where is the God that gave me a lion? Where is the God that gave me the bear? Oh God, I'm, I'm not eating hamburgers and all of this now, but Lord, I'm no more soaking Gary. At least I can eat once in a day that I paid by myself. In the dream, I saw four points. When the result came out, I saw 3.1. But Lord, I give you praise because it used to be 1.7 and you have helped me. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. It's easy for Satan to trivialize God's faithfulness in your life. Once in a while, I have the opportunity to go to hospitals to see people. And, and then I, I pray for people once in a while. And I am humbled at the confidence of people in the midst of humanly speaking unchangeable situations hallelujah I have spoken to so many HIV patients in my life and you look at some of them and you humanly speaking you can say it's over you are counting days but you see the joy I remember speaking with one of the women very recently and this woman was rejoicing she said I now have a ministry and it was, she did not even come for the counseling for healing. She had so conquered it that for her to live is Christ and to die is gain. She was focusing on something else. Yet there is somebody shouting and arguing. If the husband does not come in two months, Lord, if I backslide, let it be that it's your fault. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people who have been diagnosed. Oh, you need to go to the hospital, brothers and sisters and see people whose legs they've cut, they amputated the legs and then you keep seeing them singing His faithfulness is forevermore a pretty lady who is not married already but she had an accident and one eye is gone are you getting my point? and she says yes Lord I thank you I'm alive if I can do nothing I can give God praise whereas a house close to that same street where the accident occurred. There is a complainer and a murmurer shouting at God. We are tired of eating spaghetti in this house. My father only pays school fees. Shame on him. At his age, he cannot even give me 5,000. My father is giving me 1,000. You wait and see the one that it was with box and prophecy they sent them from the village to come to Zaria 
one heavy echo like and prophecy may God be with you and he came and stopped at North Gate not having one naira yet they are in 300 level when you see people worshipping koinonia everyone knows the story we can wear suits and fake it but everyone knows where the shoe is hurting so don't let anybody stop your praise when it's time to worship God They gave birth to them in a nice maternity world. They gave birth to you on the road. The faithfulness of God. You would have died within 24 hours. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Who is God speaking to tonight? You cried for years. Let the husband come. Now the husband has come. You are saying, Lord, I need a boy. I need a boy. I'm tired of three girls. On the other side, a woman is saying, Lord, anything, anything, boy or girl, whatever, I am grateful. Just one. I don't need two. I just need a consolation. That I am a woman. What to do? This is one big secret of my life. You never find me frowning and wondering. What will my tomorrow be me? God has done too much in my life. I can begin to count on the faithfulness of God till my time of manifestation comes and it will not finish. Hallelujah. That's why by the grace of God, there is no reason for me to envy any man till I die. People challenge me, I am happy. But God has done too much in my life. I will be the most ungrateful person in my life if I ever try to trivialize what God has done. Sister, you are always complaining, but you forgot you are beautiful. There was there about beauty. Oh, may God change it for one day and you will know what is there about beauty. Are you kidding? Beauty took a woman from her village to become the king's wife. You never say, Lord, thank you. Every day somebody says, I'm fine. To an extent, when they say you're fine, say, please don't mock me. Hold on. See, let me tell you something. Ungratefulness is a terrible disease. It's sin before God. Refusing to acknowledge the things that he has done. Shine on me Your grace Your grace I'm nothing without you It's grace Your grace Shine on me Hallelujah You are there complaining Oh God, so I'm going to graduate with a pass. You wouldn't have given me the admission. Really? Really? You wait and find out students that were withdrawn in their second year or third year because they could not get a C, not an E, a C because of the nature of their program. Hallelujah. And they left school and went, and went to learn handwork and they are still grateful to God. Hallelujah. Can we take two minutes to count our blessings? Go ahead and do it. Just in two minutes and we'll continue. Think of when you were nothing, brothers and sisters. Oh, I know what God has done in my life. No amount of honor will fool me. No amount of grace. Some of us were called this. God saved us. Some of us, when God saved you, you could not even speak English. You know it. Your family is still living in a hut right now. But God has exalted you. Tell him thank you. Your grace, your grace, we're nothing without you. Those of us who have been in this ministry for a while, remember when we used to sit on the floor? Remember when we used to sit on the floor? Who is God speaking to tonight? You are a graduate. 
and you are still complaining how many graduates does Nigeria produce in a year? I heard about a lady who had a ghastly motor accident today and died. How many of us have escaped accident? Armed robbers came to your house. They came to your neighbor's house. They came to your shop. Terrorists blew bombs in different places. Some of you saw it. You saw them. They pointed guns at you. But there was a hand of destiny that delivered you. When have you become ungrateful? Go ahead and pray. And say, Lord, although I have not seen what you will do yet, I have not seen the manifestation, but I thank you. I thank you. The God who did it for me before will do it again. The God who gave me a husband will give me a child. The God who gave me parents. The God who gave me admission will pay my school fees for next session. God who sustained my father without a job for 10 years that God is able God who sustained my mother without salary she trained me to school where is that God where is the God that delivered you when the doctors concluded about you when that breast lump grew up when, 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 that, when your hair was your hair was falling where is that God that helped you some of our parents were sacked and God gave them better jobs have you forgotten the faithfulness of this God your grace your grace I'm nothing without you grace your grace shines on me Hallelujah. There are seven secrets the Lord gave me. And the Lord told me if I keep these secrets, nothing will stop me from becoming what He has destined for me. One day maybe I will share them. But one of it is this that I've shared with you tonight. If you know how to take advantage of your testimonies, you will never never become a victim of impatience let's hurry up number three what to do while you wait for your due season employ the weapon of praise Hi-ya. many people do not know that praise is a weapon Employ when when you count your blessings, then you balance it up with praise and see the devil that will stand to speak discouragement to you. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's hurry up. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's read from verse 17 and let's see what the prophet had to say. Habakkuk chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, this is what makes some people mighty. And they walk upon the earth as if Satan does not exist. There are revelations that empower men. Although, everyone look up. The fig tree shall not blossom. But at least there is a fig tree. Is that true? Neither shall fruit be in the vines. But at least there is a vine. The labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Somebody say, yet I will rejoice. The Wayek result did not come out well. Yet I will rejoice. I will joy. In the God of what? 
the God that will bring that salvation, I will rejoice. Although nothing may seem to work, some of you as you go back right now to your homes, the truth is that there's nothing to eat this night. Yet, I will rejoice. I remember times in my life, I've told you, when I would buy bread, and cut the bread and put granite uh, and close it and give thanks to the God of Israel because I knew that what was in me was greater than the restaurant greater than whatever can you sing the song he's played now Sam what does the song say let's even understand the meaning of the song so that we know we are singing Igbo people what does he say? Email. That's what I'm saying. What's the meaning? Thank you. Huh? Thank you. For what? Thank you, Daddy. You've done well. God bless you. Email. Just worship God in one minute. Email. Oh, Kaka. Oh, God of your salvation, thank you. Psalms 138, very quickly. Psalms 138, verse 1. Powerful scripture. I'm giving you the arsenals to go back and bulldoze the gates of hell. And let the devil know that although you were almost gassing out, you came for koinonia tonight. And that the oil will never run dry. He said, I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods all the gods that want me to be weary he said i will praise you before the gods i will sing praises that means i will look at all of these options and i will dance before god and say it's better for me to remain barren than to go to a herbalist to get a child the weapon of praise the weapon of praise let me hurry up because i want us to take at least five or ten minutes Two more points and we'll round up. We have to praise God this night. Number four. What do you do while you wait for your due season? Number four. Look up. Begin to act like the future you see coming. While you wait, if you truly believe that you are going to enter that future, begin to act. If you think you are going to get into the palace, then start learning the language of royalty. It's the sign of faith that you are preparing. You believe you are getting married. Start behaving like a married woman, not a small girl. Change. Switch. Have the mindset. Develop the ideologies that conform to the new level you are entering. Start acting like the person you believe you are going to be. Develop the mindset. You believe you are going to be a multi-billionaire CEO. Start behaving like that. Don't behave like an arm robber. Don't read any nonsense you see on the internet. Compose yourself. Start carrying the traits of leaders. You believe you are going to be an exceptional leader. Start training yourself. Don't speak anyhow. Great men don't speak anyhow. Start learning the protocol of greatness. There is a protocol that leads you into the realm of greatness. You believe you are going to be standing before presidents. Start behaving well. With your plate of gari, use fork and knife and lead. No problem. Make your mistakes. You are doing it in the secret place. A day will come you will do the real one. For sure. 
Begin to act like your future. When Joseph, Joseph knew, he had seen it in the spirit, seen it in the dream, that a day will come, he will stand. The sun representing his father, the moon representing his mother, and 11 stars will bow to him. But then, his life was opposite what his destiny was saying. They threw him in the well, and he composed himself. He said, I'm a leader. I will learn the language of royalty. Listen, when they sold him for the equivalent of about $13 or so, that's the equivalent today. $13, you sell a human being. Were they so broke that they sold their brother to go away? But Joseph said, no problem. There's one song we used to sing before. You can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. We used to sing and jump with it during missions. Then in FCS, that you can take my coat, you cannot touch my destiny. Should I teach you? One minute. One, two, sing. You can take my coat, you cannot touch my destiny. They can take your coat, they can lie against you, they can scandalize you. That's taking your coat, but it will not touch your destiny. They can say you will never make it. No problem. That's taking your coat. It doesn't just mean till a woman comes to lie that you rape her. Whatever men do to impede your progress, they are taking your coat. But they can take your coat. It cannot touch your destiny. See, this must be your contemplations in the secret place. The cost of your future is preparation. The cost, the price, the cost for your future is your preparation. While you prepare for your due season, keep getting qualified for that future. You will never enter a future that you are not qualified for. I shared this last week. God will never bring you into a future you are not prepared for. So he will hold back that time so that your preparation will coincide with the comings of times and seasons. The period of waiting is the process that qualifies you for your future. Write it down. The period of waiting is the process. The trainings that you receive during that period of waiting is what qualifies you for the future. So your waiting period is a period of preparation. Everybody say my waiting period is my period of preparation. Say one more time. If God gave you the 5 million naira last year, he would have killed you. So God says, hold on. Just keep being faithful with the 100,000. Oh God, but my colleagues have 1 million. Say, no, none of your problem. Just wait. And then you keep building yourself. God, I want the level of anointing that will move mountains and do all of that. God will say, just, just keep moving your chair in the place of prayer. Your chair is small enough for you to move. When you can move that chair, you will move something else till you move mountains. David did not become a king in one day. There was a progression. Although he was anointed for the palace, there were seasons. Be faithful at your current level. When Joseph went to Potiphar's house, he was so exceptional. He didn't have to wait until he got to Pharaoh. He was faithful, excellent. So much so that Potiphar made him the head of everything. He walked like royalty. He talked what to make the wife of Potiphar to be attracted. You know, slaves had a way that they dressed. Their beds were long. They didn't have time to shave and look nice. But Potiphar's wife looked at Joseph and she, she was strict. She said, come, I prefer this guy to my husband. 
because he walked like royalty. Other slaves were moving, it's over. Wherever we die, Joseph said, I'm not dying in Egypt. I know that I've come to the place of royalty. Square up your shoulder and know that it only one of the most comforting scriptures for me in scripture in the Bible is, and it came to pass. Everybody say, and it came to pass. Powerful scripture. It never comes to stay. And it came to pass. You hear the Bible say it again. On the fifth day of this month, and that, and that, and the word of the Lord came to pass. Hallelujah. How many of you are behaving like your future already? Don't raise your hand. Some of you are still behaving like your past. Because in the future, you will be too great to keep bitterness. But you are still keeping bitterness right from secondary school. Now you've met with the lady in university and you say, even till we die, you are still holding on to your past. You are prolonging your arrival because you are not preparing yourself to be qualified. Hallelujah. Your preparation is your report card that qualifies you for the future. Your preparation is your report card. You're diligent at this level. Number five. Oh, that's a beautiful song. We've not sang this song in a while. You think I'll sing it? Let's continue. I'm trying to rush. Number five. What to do while you are waiting for your due season? Look for problems to solve. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. We discussed that last year. No man ever enters greatness. You find favor with God through the fear of the Lord, through faith and through title. You find favor with men by solving problems. Joseph knew that he had the ability to solve problems. And he rejoiced. When he was in the prison, Potiphar's wife lied that he raped her. Said, no problem. The truth will come out. Because you can see, look at me. You become too cheap when you spend your time explaining yourself to critics. Are you getting me? You become too cheap. You make yourself too cheap. There are many of us who learn this now. Learn this now. It is easier to become great than to remain great. Look at me. Come, my sister. Let this girl buy a jeep now. That by next week, Koinonia, she comes with what jeep now? Car people. Huh? Ah, that, that has expired now. Who is thinking of all these ones? Praise God. Jaguar. No, let me say something realistic. CRV. Right? Honda CRV. 2014. Limited edition. And she comes with it. Do you know at once, all of a sudden, you will find fault with her hair? You will find fault with what she's wearing. Is it this place they put watch or here? You know why? Listen. People's progress often it has a way of choking and revealing our current weakness. It is a natural thing. You must learn how to celebrate greatness when you see it. That's the antidote to jealousy and having the heart of a critic. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even if this lady came from one village somewhere and all of a sudden she marries a millionaire and God just changes her life. There are people who say, eh, is this how to smile? She's not even behaving like a rich man's wife. Hold on. The truth is, it's not about her smile. Because if another millionaire comes to marry you too, you stop. You have now become colleagues in greatness. So no more criticism. Are you seeing that? I'm teaching you a principle. Every time people criticize you, understand their predicament. Don't be angry. Your success is doing something to them. Listen. Hold on. 
you were still doing the same thing before you got great. Why was it not an issue? That is today now, all of a sudden, eh, Shedrach wants to show us he's wearing shoe of 20,000. Who doesn't have it? If not because of my father, will I not be wearing No problem. Listen. Deliver yourself from the spirit of criticism by celebrating greatness when you see it. Oh, Shedrach, this is beautiful. You are looking smart. Wow, wonderful. We are coming. God bless you. You hardly criticize those you truly celebrate. Are you getting my point? Please, learn this. Every time you see God doing a good thing in someone's life, many of our parents are like that. You just saw one doctor or one professor in ABU. He just changed the fifth car. Say, if dropping the money of the institution, it's all that. Get out of that attitude of cynicism and learn to celebrate. Because you are sowing seeds that will speak for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't spend your time trying to respond to critics. You say, hey, you have started palming your hair. You want all the colonial guys to see you, no problem. Just continue doing what you are doing. And truly they will see you. And marry and leave the person criticizing you. Problems are gates, right? Problems are not walls. They are gates. Problems are doors. Begin to view problems as gates. It exits you from one season and brings you into another. The sun will no more give you sunlight by The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. When Yahweh binds up the wounds of this world, He heals all the bruises inflicted by... This is your past now. Hallelujah. You never learned this song for how many years? Those of us who are new are lost. The old people didn't used to sing. They'll just keep chewing their mouth. The moment you say, Heal all the wounds inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Problems are opportunities for significance. When God wants to announce you, He seduces problems for you to solve. Until you solve a problem, you are not known by anybody. You remain insignificant. Until there was Goliath, David was not known. Until the king had a dream, Joseph was not needed. Problems are opportunities for your significance. Problem solving guarantees your success. Please write. I'm showing you the things to do that will bring you into your due season. Problem solving guarantees your success. Write this down. Problem solving creates your distinction from others. Everybody will look at you the same way they are looking at everybody until an ability to solve problem distinguishes you. Sovereign problem solving sets you apart. It distinguishes you. It makes your difference to be seen. Problem solving makes you known. You will remain in the wilderness until the problem you solve announces you. When you do this, you can rejoice knowing that a due season is coming. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. Brothers and sisters, as I look at us here, I see people who are bigger than Nigeria. I see people who are bigger than, than West Africa. There is an anointing within you some of you are sitting down here nobody look let me tell you i have learned from experience that there are all kinds of gifted people scattered in this house you may just sit down and watch people 
I remember when I was marking the exams of the 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 first set of the, the students, the school of ministry. My goodness, those guys were trained under quite some harsh condition. They had like six months of strike and all of that for a four-month program. They spent close to a year. When I was marking their exams, I was even afraid. I said, these guys did not do well. I was shocked. I tell you, some people wrote that exam as if it's magnet. And it's a kind of exam that you can even carry your, your, your notes and write it and you will still form it. And I learned once again, brothers and sisters, the person sitting close to your side may be a genius that is bigger than this realm. It's only a matter of time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Forget about the board, what the board has told you. 1.1, 2.2, 3.3, hold on. You are bigger than that. But will you wait for your season of appearing? Or will you get so intimidated? There are many people who sit down and say, I'm bigger than this level. So I will move myself. That's the greatest danger. There are some of you that are doing jobs of 20,000. But the truth is that even if they pay you 1 million naira, they have insulted you based on what you have. Continue doing the 20,000 naira job. Qualify yourself for the greater seasons that are coming. Hallelujah. There are some of you when you sit in class with your colleagues. Academically speaking, you may not be the best student. But there is so much in you. Don't worry. Don't try to announce yourself. Relax. A day will come, God will speak and say, This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved kingdom millionaire. This is my beloved apostle. This is my beloved prophet. This is my beloved pastor. And he will command the world to hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very, very important. We are going to do two things very quickly. In the next five minutes, please, I want everybody to participate in this. We are going to enter such a realm of prophetic worship. We are just going to thank God for the season that he has even brought us. Thank him for the things. Please worship him, prepare yourselves. Thank him for the things that he has done. And thank him for what he's going to I don't know how you are going to worship God and praise God tonight. And then after that, we will pray and prophesy and receive grace from God. This message you are hearing, you will play it again and again in the future when you sit on the throne of greatness and you will cry because you will thank God. Hearing is my father glorified give it to us again that you bear much fruit results you know many people say results don't matter it's a joke what else is the is the yardstick if results don't matter what else don't you know that even loving God and knowing God is results right the dear lady shared a testimony of a brother who was drinking and smoking anything available and now all of a sudden the guy is madly in love with God that's transformation that's results if he goes back to his friends and they say can you taste it as usual he say no 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 I'm a changed person it's not the issue of temptation I am changed transformed by a reality are we together when people who have concluded about you and said Sam you will never rise and all of a sudden you rise like an edifice and they say everybody from your village does not rise and all of a sudden you rise pastor alpha ah you won't go anywhere oh. listen do you know i love the way god is he will allow your enemies to finish talking then he'll say let's start proving them wrong one by one by one by one that's what god is doing to someone who has carried his big mouth to talk against your god in this year of triumph god will surprise them do you know listen there are people who scorn at believers happily 
every time they see people loving god they sit down and discuss them and to a point that some of you are embarrassed your phone rings it's a christian ringtone you you, you off it quickly because you you don't want to shame this god who is disappointing you my god the bible says when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like what damn it will be like a dream he will say no 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 which promise which promise are you talking about they said the one you know he said no no you are you are joking because people stratify us and keep us at a level and don't want us to rise so that their prophecy will be self-fulfilling but then when the god of heaven is ready to pick people up you know i was blessed by the testimony of a gentleman i don't know if he's here the guy in kogi that got a job what a blessed testimony all of a sudden god just changed his story look at the lady that god healed of hiv i know some of you think it's a lie this is what we are trying to destroy because if how else do you want to even carry the healing anointing if you are still calculating the physics behind the healing of whatever how did a and b become c you are not a christian because the bible said my sheep hear my voice the voice of another they will not hear this is what makes people to carry news all around thinking every man of god is faking miracles because according to their understanding issue they will not directly come and say we don't believe it but the miracle will happen right before their eyes and they say no 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 it let's let's verify when the devil afflicts you you don't verify it at once you believe it people come and say satan spoke to me he said go and kill yourself why didn't you call us for verification but when god speaks now people you know it just tells you the mindset of people how much people do not believe god please tonight be a believer be a believer don't just stand up don't just lift up hands to receive as though um let's see if god will no god will change your story and beat you beyond your imagination hallelujah one of the things god told me will happen tonight is a dramatic outpouring of the mantle of favor i've been praying do you know listen do you know i don't share too much of my personal experiences but i prayed for one year for the ministry of the gift of men one year one year lord send strategic people to my life koinonia is blessed to have men look we are going to pray for the gift of men you hear me say this thing all the time if a man does not show up in your life you are in trouble you are in trouble or if the wrong person shows up it's still the same thing as as breakthrough not coming because it will not move your life forward one man showing up in your life can say david damn come i i just feel like blessing you you sang a song and i heard and i want to bless you what does it take to produce your album ah oh, sir to produce one song in lagos is two hundred and fifty thousand. he say, okay how many tracks do you have 10 and then you are there thinking the man is like you and he's listening to you when you finish he now says this is a check of four million naira please when you do everything let me know and then you leave the man and say so what is the catch he said there is no catch when it is favor there is no catch god will just surprise you and leave you like that somebody will just build a house it's called prepared blessings see if you don't believe in what i'm telling you you can go home honestly because this is what we're going to deal with tonight triumph thanks be to god who causes us always 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 to triumph always to triumph that you come for koinonia empty-handed and as soon as the service is over someone walks to you and say i don't know you but god sent me into your life to say from now till september every month i should be giving you twenty thousand. you don't believe it can happen i hear you are five in your family and your dad is dead your mom is dead from today i become a father in this family simple for starters move out of this place into a two-bedroom flat look let me tell you something it's called quantum leap i'm trusting that god will take us into this dimension david you will do a little experiment eh you will take three steps and then you will jump forward like a frog ready now watch let me show you the difference between progress and a quantum leap are you ready 
this is progress two three now jump this is a quantum leap i know it's a little analogy but see if you if there is no provision like this your lifetime is too small for you to be successful at the rate humans move you will never build a house till you die at the rate your salary is being paid you will never do anything useful at the rate church services are held you will never know god with the amount of the sermons you need a quantum leap i have witnessed it in my life many people here are witnesses of it where god will just all of a sudden change somebody's story i tell you i feel the anointing as i'm saying this this is what many of us need tonight a quantum leap this issue of moving here and there okay thank god you are now employed you are earning forty let let's be sincere let's be sincere in the name of jesus christ who died and rose again in how many years will forty thousand build a house for you now i know many people say it does not matter it matters to any responsible person how much does it take to marry forty thousand the auditorium is how much how much does it take to a child's school fees a child's school fees right now a child who cannot talk the school fees is hundred hundred and something thousand to just teach them how to play and you plan to have five you better listen to what i'm telling you this is why people are, are depressed depressed someone is driving and talking to himself till he dies till he dies because of depression we need a quantum leap where the grace of god comes upon your life divine acceleration triumph triumph Shaka Pataya. triumph by the spirit there are ministries that need quantum leaps if all you do is to invite members through posters let me tell you the truth get set for empty pews please help those under the anointing are you hearing what i'm saying if all you want to do in life is to move like men men i'm ready more than ever let me tell you it's, it's like a flight i've been having an interesting experience with the holy spirit in the last two three weeks my goodness is is a is is a preparation for a quantum leap this man you see has gone oh I'm, I'm i'm only saying you better believe god than arise don't let anybody tell you don't listen to him run away from them they won't help you when you are in trouble you'll be surprised to see how the vicissitudes of life will distract you all these problems we are solving is to give us space to pursue our assignment not to build a house for building sake not to buy a car for buying a car sake not to eat well for whatever it is so that if you decide to lock yourself in your house to worship god for 24 hours nobody will call you and say why are you worshiping god you can't be in church and someone calls you and says you better come and on the machine on which machine you move mountains you cause walls to fall and with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because for you move mountains you cause walls to fall and with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible that we're standing here only because you can listen Brothers, let me talk to you. Do you know right now? Please come. When you see a gentleman like this, do you know if this gentleman is successful, many elders will ask him, what are you doing? In other words, how come your life is this fast? Society has made people's growth rate so slow. If you buy a car at 45, they say, wow, wonderful. You are responsible. But you buy a car at 22 and see people say you're a witch. If they see a young man succeed, you see everybody saying uh -uh, at this life two plus two it doesn't add up 
God wants to accelerate the kingdom. The coming of Jesus is near. There is a lot we must do for the kingdom. Listen, you can't spend your life looking for money. It's a cost. It's a cost. It's a cost to spend your life looking for what to eat and what to drink. You will never serve God that way. Pray eight hours. When you are hungry, you are joking. You may endure, but your children will not endure. Listen, hold on. Please, I want you to pay attention to what I'm telling you. You see me preaching from my heart. Otherwise, we'll keep playing games and at the end, many Christians will backslide, Pastor Jakes. They will leave God. How many believers do you know who are not standing again? Because the reality of life, we said this thing many years. People insulted us and said we're noisemakers. Those people today, some of them are not born again. They are not even in Christ again. They've gotten into all kinds of things. Survival is a cause. You should resolve that issue and spend your life serving God. If you are a brother here, when I say pray, please pray. Pray. The sisters can join, but brothers, you must pray. You shouldn't stand and just be, leave any man of God thing and cry. Listen, there are some of you as you are listening to me right now. There are seven siblings or six who are waiting for you to take care of them you have your own mother you have your own father and I, how are you going to live that's the cause of depression and then God calls you into ministry no job you want to marry you want to move forward you, you must be a joker you must access another mystery brothers and sisters you must trust God for a quantum leap tonight there is a grace there is a grace the name is a grace there is an unction that helps men and expedites their process in life the climate is too harsh for an average young man the probability for establishment is is almost like passing through the eye of a needle the factors are too many and we're standing here only because and we're standing here only because you made a way, made a way. When our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. hallelujah there are people here listen home and abroad their entire families are earning 200,000 but every week they are doing physiotherapy and chemotherapy for someone I heard of a woman 70,000 naira every week God is my witness they spend on is it physiotherapy or chemotherapy or something like that and there is no guarantee the person you see how the devil works until all your money finishes then the person will now die peacefully and leave you with trouble how many of you right now nobody to help you in your life lift your voice in one minute and cry cry for the help of God please koinonia pray pray
Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number two. Listen. Listen. I want us to break out of cycles tonight. Are we together? I'm going to minister to you, but there are people here. You are seeing the patterns of your families reproducing themselves in your life. Nobody rises beyond a level. Go to school or not. It's a pattern you must break. Don't watch it happen and say it's all right. Nothing solves itself by itself. You must engage it with faith. Lord, this poverty thing, I've seen it in my family. We are not lazy people, but I'm seeing it come. This lack of being serious with God, lift your voice and break every cycle. Lift your voice and command, exempt yourself. Accept yourself. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. There are people you see who never last in marriage three years no matter what happens maximum three years one nonsense must happen and scatter the marriage are we together there are some of you listen the mysteries that destroy your family is men keep cheating you whether in business whether anytime there is wickedness you are the only one it happens to it's not a coincidence when they want to scam someone you are the first they find when accident is about to happen is when you are crossing the road the car will hit your leg i like you to pray and say no more i insist i've been keeping quiet about this but tonight i place a demand lift your voice no more no more no more it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder the yoke from off your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing Take it, take it, take it, take it. Leka paroto sopra para na basha na 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 na. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Two more prayer points before I begin to minister to us. Listen, Hallelujah. Jesus said, "Satan cometh to me." And does not find anything of himself if satan finds what belongs to him in you he's authorized to destroy you we are going to pray and we are going to say lord whatever legal access the devil has over my life and destiny i apply the blood i invoke the mystery of the blood lift your voice and pray legal access i apply the blood are you praying I apply the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. I apply the blood. I apply the blood. I apply the blood. I apply the blood on my children. I apply the blood. Pray on my husband, on my wife, on my business, on my ministry, on my job. I apply the blood. No divination, no witchcraft, no enchantment arising against my life shall prevail. Hallelujah. Please keep 
standing. Keep standing, everyone. We are going to pray now. I tell you, I'm angry in my spirit. Luke 18, verse 1. Please, quickly. Luke 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable. Luke 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Verse 2. There's something I'm looking for. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God neither regarded man verse 3 and there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying avenge me of my adversary stop there God is a God of vengeance listen listen I know that's the nasty side of God but the God I serve is not only merciful God there are people who don't need mercy they need vengeance you don't pray if you don't believe it but let me tell you something there is a god of vengeance he said let god arise and let all his enemies be scattered lift your voice and cry lord avenge i cry for your vengeance over the works of darkness in my life my family koinonia pray Arise, righteousness and justice at the foundations of his throne. Oh God of vengeance, arise. Oh God of vengeance, arise against the wicked. Oh God of vengeance, arise. Oh God of vengeance, arise against evil doers. Arise against them that seek to feed on the flesh of your people. Hallelujah. Listen. There was a man in the book of Esther called Haman. Have you heard about her man? That man was conspiring to destroy the agenda of God. Not just the Jews. The agenda of God. The apple of his eyes. And then the Bible says through a lot of activities. When that plot was gotten, the king sent. And he said they should go and hang him. He already built a gallow in advance. In advance. We live in a wicked world, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you, it's not all about vengeance, but there is a dimension of it that is necessary. If you must break through, the wickedness of men is beyond imagination. You are going to pray it again. Lord, there are powers that have tied down my life and my family. Arise, O God of vengeance. Arise, O God of vengeance. Arise, O God of vengeance. hallelujah hallelujah listen listen i was told the story of a woman pastor jakes married a man that god had blessed and then the man died as soon as the man died strangers came from left right and center and told her you have no inheritance in this they stripped that woman to the last of everything banished her and her children to go men they will smile at you and talk against you in the secret and hope for tragedy to come upon your life so that they will rejoice in your pain no you rejoice in my pain the god of vengeance will arise for you i tell you only a wicked man will see someone in pain and rejoice over it he said rejoice not over me my enemies though i fall yet i will rise again how many of our parents were betrayed by their best friends they lost their job because of someone they knew was the person who signed the check sign them off say destroy them the bible says a man's enemies listen 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 koinonia 
I know many of us are young people but let me tell you when you become a leader or when you become one who is in any position of responsibility you will appreciate this prayer there are men who will kill you and bury you smiling they will kill you and bury you smiling when Judas came to kiss Jesus a kiss is a sign of love correct yet a man used that sign of love as a symbol to an enemy this is the guy this is how you will kill him how many people kissed you into your suffering today they kissed you with a stupid advice and that's that's what has landed your life today they told you stop tightening. these men of god are crooks they have destroyed your life are we together tonight i want us to engage the word to engage the word with your spirit if you insist brothers and sisters god will give you a breakthrough if you insist god will give you a breakthrough are we together now i want you to pray one last prayer and then i'll begin to minister by the spirit lord visit the root cause of my challenges I may not know what it is i only know the effect oh god go to the root he says every tree the axe is placed at the root every tree my father has not planted lord go to the root cause of the barrenness in my life the root cause as to why finances cannot stay in my hands the root cause are you praying are you hallelujah hallelujah listen if after tonight's meeting you return with a testimony nobody will ask you to run to the house of god you will go by yourself do you know how many why many people never seek god the truth is they are tired of lack of results they are tired of it jumping around doing all kinds of things yes you don't love god just for results but you've heard me say it again at a point in your christian experience results must come as consolations to your serving god visit us tonight in the mighty name of jesus visit us tonight in the mighty name of jesus visit us tonight in the mighty name of jesus visit us tonight let me make an altar call let's start with the altar call first so that we'll finish right now please everyone standing no moving around outside your attention there are people right here everything we boast of is in christ if you are not in christ there is no guarantee please listen very carefully if you are not in christ there is no guarantee whatsoever are we together now so you are here we are talking about witchcraft you have joined us to pray congratulations but nothing will happen to you until there is a translation because when a man is not in christ the bible says he's in the kingdom of darkness the very domain of darkness are we together now so when that prayer of salvation is offered in faith there is a spiritual transfer it is only on that basis you can challenge darkness there are two cate categories of people very quickly i'm going to make the altar call quickly when you come pastor jakes will lead you in prayer and then we'll take over and fly tonight and trust god to take us to a realm where we will never return never return to this level in the name of jesus you are here and you are saying man of god is as if you are just prophesying to me you are right it's you i'm speaking to and i'm going to make an altar call one maybe two three minutes wherever you are outside i know there are lots of people you are saying man of god can god forgive me yes he can 
can God give me a new beginning? Absolutely. No one has made it in my family. You will be the first. If and only you receive him. He says, as many as believed in him, even to them that, I mean, as many as received him, even to them that believed in him, he gave them power to become. Power to become. You do not have the power, but you have the will. And you can choose. Right now, I'm going to make an altar call. Whether you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time or you want to rededicate your life. Man of God, I gave my life to Christ but somehow things have gone haywire. No problem. You are welcome. If you are outside, run like there's fire on the mountain. Any of the overflows, you are inside here. You run out. I will count one to five very quickly. One. Run like there's fire on the mountain. If you are thinking about it, go back to your seat. Give Jesus praise. Please clear the way for them. There are people running outside. Let Jesus Christ step into your destiny. Koinonia, can you motivate them? Appreciate them as they come. Don't let any friend tell you why are you disgracing yourself. Shame the devil over your life tonight. God bless you. Keep coming. Man of God, you don't know what I've done. Just make that step of faith and come. Quickly, run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Keep coming keep coming there are still more people there are still more people if you came with a friend and he's trying to stop you leave him alone and come run to Jesus Every one of us in front, can you just lift up your hands? Lifting up your hands is a sign of surrender. Are you following? Please just lift up your hands and pray this prayer sincerely from your heart. Jesus loves you. I want you to understand that. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus. Say it out loud. I want to hear you speak. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. I come before you. I ask for forgiveness for my sins. I believe in the power of your blood. I believe in the power of your salvation. Forgive me of for all my sins. Thank you for new life. Thank you for newness in Christ Jesus. From today, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. My spirit is new. My heart is new before God. In the name of Jesus. Still lift up your hands while I quickly pray for you. Father, thank you for these precious ones. Thank you for the power of your blood. My Father, I ask even as your hands are lifted up, let your love, Lord, descend upon them. I ask that, Lord, the love of God will permit, the love of Christ will be shared abroad in their hearts by the Holy Ghost. Thank you for their lives, God. Thank you for writing their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. We give you praise. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that indwells them now. Thank you for the Holy Spirit helping them to walk in your ways, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for your glory upon them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Please just look at me. Just the moment you turn, just in between the aisle, just you'll see somebody waving behind you. Please just follow him. We'd like to get your name, okay? Your name and some of your contact to get to pray with you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Precious saints, can we celebrate Jesus for this? Can we put our hands together and celebrate Jesus? Celebrate them. Congratulations. Congratulations. God bless you. Please. Let's attend to them quickly so that they can come. We're about to pray now. Hallelujah. We're about to pray. Before we pray, let me talk to two people. There's one inside, one outside that God is visiting their family. There's a mighty anointing that will come on them. One sister, a sister or so, someone inside and someone in the overflow outside. The power of God is going to come on that person now. God is bringing a strange deliverance. I'm seeing a strange deliverance. Bring the person one inside, one outside. I just want to speak to them. Please quickly. We have a lot to do tonight and we want to conserve time. Hallelujah. 
Shabrato Karabara Banana Shabrato Gapra Sopra de Girivalaba Shekatu Sopra de Sopra Lift your hands. I want to pray. Just bring the people. Father, end witchcraft now in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that the reign of darkness is over. Bring this lady for me. Free now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Free. I'm going to pray for you. There will be a mighty deliverance right now. Listen, what is deliverance? Deliverance is not crying and rolling on the floor. Deliverance is by the power of God separating you from the spirits and the influences that are responsible for the challenges in your life. I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. I'm already seeing in the spirit. Mighty. Especially today, God is visiting visitors. If you are here for the first time, God is visiting visitors in a very strange way. Lift your hands. Don't say anything. Just lift your hands. Just keep your hands lifted. Please bring them. Just keep your hands lifted. Keep your hands lifted. God is touching people. It's a foolish instruction, but it's what the Lord is telling me. Just keep your hands lifted. Like fire. It's coming on people inside and outside. Bring them out. God is visiting visitors. Visitors, visitors doesn't mean other people are not being touched, but particularly visitors. Father, spare not your hand, spare not your hand, spare not your hand. hallelujah praise the lord let me pray now father in the name of jesus christ i'm praying there are men and women here right now under strange influences that has tied their lives their destinies in the name that is above all names whoever under the sound of my voice inside and outside if there is any spirit motivating the tragedies in your life as we shout that name Jesus there will be an eruption of fire in this place and all of a sudden God will begin ministering to people are you ready now at the count of three one two three second they must go from the hiding place they must depart from their hiding place. They must depart from their hiding place. At the sound of his voice, I command every spirit. I command every devil. Strange spirits tying down the destinies of men. I command you right now. There is mighty deliverance happening in the overflows outside mighty deliverance happening in the overflows outside the power of witchcraft being broken being broken being broken God is addressing issues of oppression oppression Shakataya it must end now it must come to an end now. It must come to an end now. Lift your hands. 
Hallelujah. I'm seeing a handwriting and I'm seeing setback and then slash delay. That's what God wants to deal with right now. God wants to deal with it. You don't need to know whether you belong to the category. The fire of God will locate you right now. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, anyone under the sound of my voice, shakatabakata, under the yoke of setbacks, whether you are a visitor, whether you've been here for a long time, in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave you now. I command that spirit to leave you now. The power of God is touching people. Delay, 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 delay. You are a strange spirit. I curse you by the God of heaven. Delay in destiny. Delay in achievement. that spirit I cost that spirit I cost that spirit bring the mommy out there's a mighty deliverance happening to her delay over your family broken 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 by the spirit hello Madonna Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me a strange instruction. Please, sisters, lay your hands on your womb. Lay your hands on your stomach. Something remarkable is going to happen here right now. There is a kind of deliverance God is doing. I don't know what I'm even doing. But Lord, I pray right now. This is not for everybody. But I am seeing the Lord is instructing that they lay their hands. And I'm going to pray a prayer for you. You'll be surprised. Every stranger hiding in any sister's body that is responsible for the manipulation of their destinies in the name of Jesus by this prophetic instruction at the count of three release them now one two three release them now 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 Johnson Johnson I'm hearing a name Johnson 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 we are still praying please Johnson my God I tell you I see this fire falling on sisters I don't know what it is with ladies God is God is ministering a serious deliverance to ladies serious deliverance to ladies hallelujah hallelujah you are here in this place listen you never rise beyond a certain level it's not that you don't start please listen carefully i'm speaking by the spirit the moment is like there is a spiritual embargo you get to that height you must crash down wherever you are i'm prophesying now and i'm praying for you the power of God is looking for those people. The power of God is looking for those people. You rise to a level and fall. 
you rise to a level and fall lord in the name of jesus inside and outside wherever you are i release that fire like a messenger to your life like a messenger to your life i cause that witchcraft now i cause that witchcraft now hallelujah the lord is showing me a vision my god hold on i'm seeing deliverance for children like little children the power of god is coming on small children in this place i'm seeing children being delivered some initiated into occultism some initiated into this let's just walk the way god is father in the name of jesus i speak to every little child in this place who is a victim of any satanic manipulation wherever they are don't be surprised if you see little children manifesting now wherever they are inside and outside i'm prophesying that the spirits symbols just the symbols please. right now wherever the children are i'm prophesying that the power of god will touch them touch them i set them free from activities of witchcraft occultism any kind of initiation if there is any little child here under any yoke of bondage i set them free now i set them free now hallelujah hallelujah my friend lift your hands that gentleman going tap him Hi. there is hardship in your family and the lord is asking me to curse it right now in the name of jesus i cause hardship let the anointing of the spirit come on you now i curse that spirit the spirit of hardship i curse you now i curse you now i curse you now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah listen if you are here and you have any blood disease just blood disease any kind any kind blood related issue lay your hand on your chest i want to pray for you right now blood related issue genotype whatever it is um, or any kind of thing maybe any sickness that is blood related please i want to pray for you right now the lord is giving me that instruction very quickly i want to pray for you i'm seeing a lady who is as god is about to change her genotype now 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 a dramatic change of genotype from as to ss from as to aa by the spirit by the spirit by the spirit hallelujah hallelujah please if you come from a family where no one in your family is working lift your hands nobody no job nobody just please just do what i'm asking you to do let's save time just lift your hands nobody at all is working no matter what happens just lift your hands i want to pray for you lift your hands i want to pray for you jesus 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 i'm i'm looking at hands lifted and and for some of the hands i'm seeing like a rope this is not necessarily you this is a representation of your family and i want to pray for you in the name of jesus i stretch my hands get ready for the power of god right now wherever you are even those who didn't lift their hands i decree and declare that that yoke of joblessness comes under attack right now right now right now right now right now i release them i release them i release their jobs 
I release their jobs by the power of the Holy Ghost 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 we end joblessness here right now right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah the spirit of revelation is coming on 17 people one seven one seven one seven at the count of four this is the instruction God gives me unusual access to illumination Lord where are they inside and outside one ta -ba -ta 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 -ta. two three strange illumination four take it now take it now the spirit of revelation on common access to the secrets of the kingdom on common access 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 i release it in the spirit access 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 hallelujah please make sure you receive every word that is coming every word come god is going to use you come come and stand here lift your hands stand up in the name of jesus i don't know you ah huh? but an anointing will come upon your life today and god is going to change your life like day and night receive that grace right now strange grace step into that dimension that dimension there are impartations going on now let's just receive the impartations impartations not healings not healings impartations impartations i release the gifts of the spirit right now right now i release the gifts of the spirit lord stir up the fountain stir up the waters stir up the waters i release the gifts of the spirit strange gifts strange gifts strange manifestations of power of power healing anointings healing anointings i activate healing anointings right now healing anointings step into it step into it outside inside step into it god is releasing mantles mantles of healing ancient mantles of healing ancient mantles grace for barrenness grace for barrenness grace for barrenness healing barren cases hallelujah hold on i'm still praying i'm still praying god wants to release the healing anointing let's just stay here with this healing thing god wants to release there are many more people i'm not seeing them receive it yet father you want to release this grace there is such a grace as the healing anointing i pray for you right now in the name of jesus i stretch my hands inside and outside like a tornado may the power of god come on you now everyone everyone everywhere men women take it take it take it fire upon your spirit Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come I will be done. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come. I will be Elohim Adonai, Elohim Adonai, Hallelujah. Now, I don't know how we are going to manage this now. Ushers, there is a prophecy for you. The Lord says, I should tell you from now, as you hold people and as you shake them, there will be a transference on every one usher. I'm prophesying now. That's why I say, I don't know what we'll do. Ushers, ushers, receive that mantle. Receive that mantle. A strange healing grace coming on our ushers supernatural 
supernatural the unction take it take it where you are let that fire come upon you upon ushers in a strange way upon ushers in a strange way the grace for the miraculous no longer will you just hold people no longer will you just welcome people as you clean the seats you release strange mantles hallelujah we'll soon pray for the sick but please everyone lift your hands lift your hands i want to pray i'm seeing people here the anointing for business and entrepreneurship just keep your hands that's why please keep your hands i want to pray for you don't say i'm not calling to a businessman that's none of your business just listen to what i'm saying i want to pray for you is a grace is a grace i believe maybe in the course of the service we'll call it jimmy here to just prophesy that grace and release it truly truly upon your life lift your hands brothers and sisters there is a grace for the marketplace you don't go there through desire it's not that you are a, mon a money monger you just go but strange ideas strange insight do you know i'm seeing a number four and one 41 this will affect many people inside and outside whether you are a businessman or not is not what i'm asking you that grace will locate you where you are a grace for the marketplace lord in the name of jesus inside and outside all the overflows online anyone here who must step into that grace whether you know anything about the marketplace or not take that grace now take that grace now i release it supernatural access 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 to business strategies access to ideas take it right now receive it receive it it's coming on people receive it receive it receive it is coming on you so that you will go and prosper 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 there is a woman one of our mothers this grace that i'm talking about is coming on you now now one of our mothers one of our mothers is receiving that grace god is releasing that grace whether you are inside or outside whoever it is i release that grace now there is a woman i'm seeing in the spirit you must take that grace now you must take that grace now on common ability on common ability on common insight for the works of your hands to begin to produce fruit hallelujah hallelujah listen look at me please help them how many of you are trusting god to restore something that has left your life it can be anything how many of you are trusting god i want to release that grace now and i want you to believe it some of you had destiny help us but something happened and they left your life some of you had quality relationships but it left your life some of you had finances but it left your life some of you even had certain levels of graces the lord is asking me to prophesy restoration Kai, this is going to land on people's head i'm saying this thing there are physical gifts you used to see in your life not gifts of the spirit not just gifts of the spirit gifts gifts endowments for some reason it disappeared some of you are actually worshippers singers but that grace left is coming back is coming back i invoke the grace that he has put upon my life i prophesy strange restoration 
I call it by name and I command it back to your life. I call it by name. Everything you once were that you now are not, I command you to become it now. I command you to become it now. I release that grace. I release that grace. Receive it. I release that grace. I release that grace. Hallelujah. Now listen. Listen. There are some of us, hear me. You have been doing certain things. But the anointing for what you are doing has not yet come on your life. This is a very serious prayer. I want to pray for you. You have been doing business with the brain of a money monger. But not the grace for the marketplace. You have been singing only with the voice of a musician but not the spirit of David. I want to release the anointing of your office. The anointing that has to do with your function. Please, I want you to believe what I'm praying. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. It's one thing David was anointed to step into his office. Are you anointed for what you are doing? I know you are working. You want promotion. Is there an unction you are working with? Or are you just working with certificate? At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. There will be distribution of graces. It's like an alignment. The anointing, the oil of your call, the oil of what you are doing is about to locate you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, whoever is functioning without an anointing, functioning without the oil, I stand upon this ground and I prophesy at the count of three may the grace that will distinguish you come upon you get ready now one one two two three receive that grace now take it take it grace grace for your academics grace for the ministry, grace. The words you speak turn things around. Help me. The chains are gone. hallelujah hallelujah please i'm seeing something happening here right now there are people who are receiving grace for speed and they will start running physically hold them hold them so they don't injure people i release the grace you won't control yourself physically running speed physically i release that grace now receive grace for speed receive grace for speed right now right now i command you to run run in the spirit catch up catch up catch up by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus i release speed i release speed i release speed speed to your life speed to your destiny speed to your life speed to your destiny your life speak to your destiny the words you speak come things around your arms run like Elijah run like Elijah you took away the chain
much mercy much more than I deserve hallelujah praise the Lord we are going to pray for the sick now listen please three things let me just give three instructions hold on please everyone the worship team will continue right now now we are going to be very fast about this number one number two please if you have not written your prayer request or the ones of your loved ones please i permit you put on your phone and call them tell them to send it as a text message write it we are going to be praying here tonight and we are going to be asking the fire of god to fall on request don't assume if you have not written it no problem settle down think well and write you are here you are trusting god for healing i understand there are a few sick people that they brought around please we're going to do it this way if your case is very sensitive then you can bring them to the front here but those outside please just walk to the um well there are a lot more people outside really well for those who can come in let's see but for those who may not make it you can walk to the front and then down there i'm here pastor jakes is here um we'll just station ourselves one one and then the other people will just support so that we can do it very fast praise god thank god pastor jakes is here and jimmy is here hallelujah praise god hold on so outside you can just walk at your various projector stands and stand there for those who have come in just allow them don't stop them let them come in that does not mean everybody will stream in please are we together if you're standing just stand trust god if they don't ask you what is wrong with you don't worry they just lay hands on you praise the lord Ejimi, please you help us Ejimi will be outside here and pastor jakes will be down outside there praise the lord benga you go with pastor jakes you will help pastor jakes outside um pastor alpha you'll be outside just help them and then um who is around again is femi around okay so you can just come and help me here so let's do it that way very fast very very fast if there are more people there see promise is here michael is here so maybe you can add one okay promise just follow promise follow pastor jakes michael follow a jimmy please let's do it very very fast while hold on please don't be distracted don't cut the flow we are going to be very fast at this and we'll pray and then i'll speak over your life many miracles are happening even whilst you are seated don't be distracted i expect you to be writing your request and be praying in the spirit hallelujah for those stationed at different points whether at the back any of the overflows i'd like you to believe god for a miracle right now believe god for a miracle you can see someone like our daddy he has come with his crutch believing god to walk you believe you walk sir you believe the lord will heal you so get ready to walk you see there are people stationed around we are going to pray this will be very very fast and then the lord will help us in the name of jesus christ hallelujah father thank you let me start with our daddy first how long have you been like this sir six months stroke who brought him who came with our daddy you came by yourself sir came by myself by yourself from where sir first station here you cannot walk i can move with you this walking stick which but of the legs has a problem this is the leg this is stroke yes can you lift it no i can't i can't the hand i can't lift hold it. on look at this sir look at me you believe in jesus i believe you believe in the power of I jesus believe. lord i introduce your kingdom to this man's life right now in the name of jesus christ huh the lord will begin to touch you your hands everything is already dead sir lift your leg lift your leg just do what i'm asking you to do lift your leg just lift it lift your leg lift your leg start try to walk gently come come try to walk gently come give me the stick look at me look at your stick come come Don't be afraid, come. Lift your leg. Look at this, look at what is happening to this man. Came with this stick. Look at this. 
Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. chair and just keep him let him sit down while the power of God touches him sir you came here by yourself um trusty okay and the boy has gone okay he's somewhere in the name of Jesus Christ the God you believe has begun this miracle you will perfect it look for a stick for him there hold your stick by yourself and go don't put it on the ground hold it up walk by yourself and go give Jesus praise look at God is Heal now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is destroying witchcraft in your life in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Someone is still sick here someone is still sick here I'm feeling the healing anointing pulling out from me someone is still sick here no 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 I'll pray for you but I'm saying I feel it within this vicinity from ministers go down choir someone is sick come let me pray for you you came out lift your hands Jesus someone is still sick here Someone has to be healed here now. Someone is sick here. I know when the anointing has released me to do something else. I still feel that someone is sick. Someone is sick. Someone is still sick. Lord, let that person be healed. This is a miracle service. This is a miracle service. This is a miracle service. Just this vicinity. I sense it's like, you know how someone is pulling your cloth. Jesus said, virtue has gone out of me. That's what I'm still feeling. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's a gentleman here. Your elder brother has a case. I may not be able to mention the case. This is a health-related case. But this is a challenge with married people. This has affected, it's one of the worst things that can happen to a man in marriage. And the Lord is bringing a miracle right now. Right now. Elder brother, supernatural miracle is coming to that person by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hi. You are holding her, but something is leaving her to you now you who is holding her something is leaving her to you there is there is virtue i see a transference of grace from a jimmy's wife to you you are doing your work as an usher but you have received something very strange and very powerful you see let me tell you something if if you do not you see hold on walking in the anointing is more than having it having the anointing is very different from being able to navigate the pathways of the anointing if not you will be anointed but you will not be able to dispense it fruitfully because you are just guessing it's like a man shooting anyhow you must have discernment many people think all it takes once you can speak and someone falls they say i am anointed what do you know about the anointing the anointing is more than releasing something mysterious to somebody it must accomplish something this you need more discernment than even the anointing the substance the ability to look at for instance like these people who have been touched now you are an anointed man of god you are finished praying you go to the next thing you see 
insensitivity in the spirit this is not guesswork if you are guessing you will not see the results like this it's not it's not guessing so please learn it i know that this is a place where we value the anointing and there are many of you you are waiting for me to prophesy release impartation after this now it's not it's not just about holding people ah hold this lady hold Mukhtar's wife an anointing is coming on her please hold her her and Mata, two of them there is i don't know what it is but i'm seeing i don't know why god is doing this thing it's a strange God, God is giving two of them strange favor, strange favor. I see strange favor, strange favor. America, God is giving you access. I'm seeing you like a crown coming on your head. And God is saying he's giving you strange access, strange access, strange access, strange access, strange access. God is giving strange favor. Strange favor. Strange favor. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'm saying, but this is a word for someone. And the Lord is saying, why make it next year when I have destined it to be this year? Why make it next year? when i have destined it to be this year this is the word of the lord why make it next year this is a word for many people when i've destined it to be this year as i speak to you the word is for you the power of god will locate you why make it next year when i have destined it to be this year it's a year of triumph it's a year of triumph why make it next year just allow me to do my stupidity why make it next year when i have destined it to be this year why make it next year when I have destined it to be this year? My God. Hallelujah. There is a lady here. You have been disappointed with God right now. You actually came help the ushers. You came expecting that I would directly call your case and you, you, you prayed this thing but now it looks like we're about to pray and I didn't call your case the power of God is coming on you now now as a sign that God had you. now wherever you are he's locating you now now I command that spirit to leave you. I see you in the spirit. Go now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I stretch my hands now and I command. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let her go now. Peace to your spirit. Every devil carries his nonsense and lives with you. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Pastor Jake is still praying outside. Okay, we can just do it. This is a blessing. There are two moments in every miracle service you should not miss. Ah, there is, I mean, God is just doing certain things. It's like something is really happening. Don't worry about what is happening. Impartations. God, see, let me tell you right now, if the anointing comes on you, just know that is the answer to your prayer this is not a special once the anointing comes on you just know that your prayer has been answered you understand this is what it doesn't mean if the anoint if you don't fall down it's not answered i'm not saying that but i'm saying this is how god is choosing to confirm to some people now as i'm talking that your prayer no matter how difficult it is no matter how difficult your prayer is Praise the Lord. Now, everyone, please stretch your hands here and pray in the Holy Ghost. Please, Pastor Jakes, come. What do you mean? Please, okay, he's writing something. Just stretch your hands here and pray. 
and pray in the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost from the depth of your heart. Stretch your hands. Shakatopakata. Leketeketekete. Stretch your hands here and pray in the Holy Ghost. No, Liva. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Prophesy in the Holy Ghost. Shake it to go to Toketa. Rakata Kata Makata. So put on so pekete. Miracles, so God. Testimony, so God. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. We prophesy it. We prophesy it. We prophesy it. We prophesy it. Visit impossible situations. I tell you, God is moving. I see a cloud. I see a cloud over this prayer request. That's what I see in the spirit. God is moving upon it. Moving upon it. Moving upon it. The spirit of God is moving over the prayer request. Visiting families. Releasing angels. Releasing angels. Visiting the request. I'm seeing the cloud of God's presence. Visiting the prayer request. Savior, He can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Mighty and everlasting Father, Master of the Universe, the God that answers by fire. We receive answers by fire in the name of Jesus. Angels of God, are you not ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? We receive angelic ministration and direct answers from heaven now in the name of Jesus. The heavens over these requests are open and answers come speedily in the name of Jesus. It has been decreed, it has been ratified. And it is done in the name of Jesus. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask, above all that we imagine, is done in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we have decreed. On, give Jesus praise. Give Jesus mighty praise. Hallelujah. Please say to me, still come. Pastor Jake's come. I just feel like doing this is, I, I don't always do this, but I want to prophesy over your lives. And in the name of Jesus, they are my friends. But the Lord is telling me to speak over their lives. They are great men of God in power. But in the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying I should prophesy the next dimension. To prophesy a new level. And in the name of Jesus, I speak it. Step into a new dimension. A Jimmy, God is saying I should release grace for access. I command that grace. Strange access. Strange access. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Strange access. Gifted men coming into your life connections with gifted men in the name of jesus 
and pastor jakes god is giving you influence strange influence strange influence strange influence strange influence is a very strange apostolic dimension of influence lord i pray in the name of jesus that you will bless them wherever your wives are i bring them into this experience now 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 wherever they are i prophesy to tosin wherever she is and i speak to hope you are one so i prophesy as it happens to you i bring your wives into this experience in the name of jesus strange levels of access strange levels of access strange levels of influence hallelujah hallelujah let me do this just once i spotted lizzie somewhere one of the oldest year nine lady come she came in from abuja part of the founding people that started this ministry all the way and the lord is saying i should prophesy a release i told you about ladies who used to climb trees when this ministry started no money no nothing they were in welfare they were in worship team at the same time they would climb trees and pluck the firewood for cooking for us for the crusades and the lord is saying i should pray and prophesy and open up a new dimension that it is for her does not mean you cannot receive it you see the thing with prophecy is the moment there is hunger it will still land on your head praise the lord father in the name of jesus i lay my hands right now over lizzie and lord jesus i prophesy i prophesy according to the word that you are giving me i open up a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter shabaka toto barekete zat kaska paskata paskate pash legete to soto prendeke skopariya da balaraba a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter and as many who desire to drink of this grace a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter as many who desire to drink of this grace a new chapter in the name of jesus a new chapter listen i prophesy to you a new chapter by the power of the holy ghost Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. We are rounding up. Who is this girl? Come. You. God has chosen to visit you. Come. Come and stand here. God is wiping your tears. This prayer I'm praying for you will open the tulip gates of your destiny. I lay my hands upon you and I command the gates to be opened now. I stood there and I saw you and the Lord said I should open that gate. I lay my hands upon you. I command the gates to be open. Be open right now. Be open right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be open right now. We're rounding up. We're rounding up. Please, this lady with uh, yellow, blue, you come. I don't know you but the Lord is asking me to pray for you lift your hands this is a real prayer to usher you into a strange realm of blessings I lay my hands and I remove the embargo from your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ I command uh -uh. I'm praying for you but I'm seeing my hand on you I'm praying for you but I'm seeing my hand on you Jesus, please visit them. Strange visitations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Strange visitations. Lift your hands, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah. I just saw a door open. And I saw a name come out. Listen. I saw a name come out. And I saw the Okalo family. The Okalo family. This is Okalo family. Okalo family. Okalo family. Okalo family. God is visiting your all three of you. Step into that grace. I open that door now. 
the Okalo family step into that grace open 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 I open that door and age long witchcraft broken over your family and age long witchcraft broken over your family and age long witchcraft broken over your family I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus a dramatic restoration of everything that by the power of witchcraft has tied you down whatever has covered your glory I speak it right now in the name of Jesus let it be open 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 I unveil your glory I unveil your glory I unveil your glory Shaka -ta -ta -ta. I unveil your glory I unveil your glory Tonight is a strange night Please receive every prophetic word That I'm going to pray for you Ah Just allow me to do one more thing The spirit of God I have not seen this in a while I'm now seeing the map of Nigeria And I see Benway State the Spirit of God is going to Benway right now. Right now. Touching people. You know how it happens when I speak. Benway. Benway. Miracles. Locate them now, oh God. People from Benway. Benway. Strange grace. Strange grace. I break witchcraft. Benway. I'm seeing Benway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I'm seeing, I know O to go, but I'm seeing the O, A. A at the, is there a place like that? O to bar or something. The power of God, I'm seeing that. Going to that area. The Lord is bringing a miracle. Ends with an A. Whoever comes from that region, in the name of Jesus, breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Strange breakthrough. Strange breakthrough. Benway. 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 I don't know why God is doing this, but I'm prophesying it. May the angel of the Lord's presence step into that place. Hallelujah. I'm seeing another name on the map. Emo. 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 Where are they, oh God? Emo. 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 Emo state. Emo state. The anointing of the spirit locates them now strangely matato sotota emo state miracles miracles breakthroughs signs wonders miracles miracles to emo state by the spirit of the living god hallelujah If you're from Cross River, Cross River, Calabar, something is happening right now. Cross River, Cross River, Cross River, Cross River, help her, help her, please. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, everyone the ministry of signs and wonders let me talk to you my dear this lady looking at me you come the Lord has located you today come lift your hands the Lord says I should tell you for shame he's bringing laughter to your life for shame he's bringing laughter to your life for shame he's bringing laughter to your life for shame He's bringing laughter to your life. Lift your hands. We're rounding up. You've heard me say it again that this is the most powerful part of the service. I want you to believe it. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, the anointing flows through me to you. And I know when the anointing is heaviest. It's only because many of us are already used to some of these things. And so you think when these things are happening... You don't judge the anointing just by physical manifestations. I want to pray for you. Please receive everything I pray for you. Every age-long challenge. 
every challenge that has refused to leave I prophesy upon it right now. I command that it comes to an end in your life now. 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 That fair lady, come. This lady, Diana. Run, come. Lift your hands. I'm still praying. In the name of Jesus. Listen whatever has brought shame and dishonor like a stigma to your life i roll it away right now in the name of jesus i roll it away right now in the name of jesus i roll it away right now in the name of jesus i roll it away right now in the name of jesus my dear look at me I saw you inside a cave and I'm surprised because we've paid for, for deliverance prayer and I saw you inside a cave you are just trying to push the door that's why I asked you to come out let me I don't know you do I know you where did you come from where where is that yes I'm going to pray for you God is bringing a major breakthrough two things God is going to throw somebody out of your life I'm not a prophet of doom but it will happen he will reach three days huh? throw completely so that you can move forward i hold your hands in the name of jesus every deceiver of your destiny will drive them far from you right now in the name of jesus christ you need to love jesus with all your heart right you are a nice person but your relationship with jesus you can, you can get teachings after this but i want to prophesy on your life god is taking somebody not death though just driving somebody out an unwanted person out of your life i prophesy the kind of favor you have never seen i lay my hands on you and i provoke the heavens to release that favor for you in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare over every family represented here whether your nuclear family your extended family hold on i don't know what has gone wrong but in the name of jesus within now and miracle service match dramatic turnaround for families dramatic turnaround for families dramatic turnaround for families in the name of jesus one of the mysteries responsible for open doors and new levels is the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers i want to pray for you i don't know where they are but one thing I know is they never come on their own. They are called by prophecy. I prophesy to the north. I prophesy to the south. I prophesy to the east. I prophesy to the west. The helper of your destiny. I command them to appear now. 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 Hallelujah. Come. Come and hold my hands. Congratulations. I'm seeing a job. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a very good job. And the Lord is saying I should congratulate you. Look at me. You will stand here and testify before the people of all the Holy Ghost said I should tell you is congratulations and I hold your hand in the name of Jesus Christ may it come to pass I decree and declare the results you have not had in 10 years put together in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God in one month 30 days I stand here under the unction of the Holy Ghost 30 days beginning from today step into those results step into those results ah, yeah, 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 yeah. step into those results step into those results strange dimensions of results hallelujah whoever has despised you whether to your knowing or not to your knowing i pray may god put them on the scene as he lifts you may they watch your rising as god honors you 
I pray for anyone here whose spiritual life has gone down. Prayer life down. Your praise and worship life down. Fasting down. Word life down. In the name of Jesus Christ, I activate fresh grace. Receive it fresh grace. Fresh fire. Outside, receive it fresh grace. Fresh fire. Fresh grace. Hallelujah. Wherever your prosperity is, I pray. May, listen, listen. Hagar carried Ishmael and they were roaming around the desert. They said there was no water. But when an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw water. That you have not seen it does not mean it's, there, it's not there. I open your eyes to see where God has anointed to bring you financial blessings. I open your eyes in the name of Jesus. I open your eyes to see where God has placed your prosperity. Hallelujah. The plague of death that is looming around this nation looking for people and families is listen it's like a graph it rises then sometimes it relaxes i'm praying whoever calls your name i'm prophesying this all whether in the secret or the open to invoke death upon your life i command the earth to open and swallow them I command the earth to open and swallow them. Whoever prophesies that it will not be well with you, may misery follow them. The Esther anointing, the unction and the grace, that granted Esther uncommon access in the presence of Ahasuerus Shababa Satalakata in the name of the Lord Jesus I release the Esther anointing upon your destiny right now take it I release the Esther anointing upon your destiny hallelujah two more prayer points and we're done hallelujah listen listen many of us do not understand the mystery of spiritual defense and protection listen i want to pray something that is very powerful in your life listen when you are in trouble and there is nobody to show up for you it's a cause are you hearing what i'm saying now the bible says defend you in the day of trouble there are many of us if for any reason things go wrong in your life you are in trouble there is nobody that can arise as a defense but i'm prophesying to you right now in the name of jesus christ whoever must arise and defend your cause in the presence of your helpers and in the presence of your persecutors i call them forth right now in the name of jesus may god raise men to be a wall of defense for you in this wicked um wicked state that we are living right now in this country people say if you don't have anybody and honestly speaking somebody can get up and come and seize your land you and your land and your paper they will collect it because there is no defense i'm prophesying again quarter to shame May God raise a defense for you. And finally, I want to pray the prayer of Jabez for you. Many of us, ha, many of us have not studied. Honor is not money. Listen, listen. There are many rich people with no honor. Are we together? There are many well-to-do people with no honor. Do you know what honor is? honor is when god anoints men to lavishly discern and celebrate what you represent without reservation so for every one person who talks nonsense there are thousands honor jabez said oda the mother bore him in sorrow you brought shame for me so i call you jabez honor is more than money brothers and sisters the bible says a good name is better than riches i pray 
the mantle of honor that by the grace of God has rested upon this ministry in the name that is above all names for as many who have the grace and the discernment to receive take that mantle right now take that mantle right now they don't have to know you but strangers will come to feed your flock receive that grace for honor hallelujah wave your hands to Jesus and praise him wave your hands to Jesus and praise him wave your hands to Jesus and praise him wave your hands thank you Jesus we bless you we lift our hands to the great I am who was and who something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching